I've had have both treated me badly. Why do I attract people like that? People like that are all around us. We attract everything. The question isn't why do I attract these people? The question is why are you choosing these people? Remember, life begins when you ask the right question. If you're asking the wrong question, you keep getting, you know, in loops that don't help you grow and evolve. It doesn't matter why you attract them. Bad people are attracted to everybody, right? So it, it's, I attract people who wouldn't be good for me. It's, I'm not questioning why I attract them, but I would start questioning why I choose them. And that is the right question. So if you want to stop choosing the wrong person, you got to dive into no more assholes. You got to use that no kissing for three months dating rule and vet the next person. Give them time and space to reveal who they are before you choose them. How do I break up with my boyfriend who isn't doing enough? Um, so the breakup sandwich is, this is what's good about you. This is why it's not working. This is why you'll be great for someone else. And you don't need permission, by the way, to not be in a relationship. Sometimes I get people who say, I'm trying to break up with my boyfriend, but he won't let me. Uh, -uh. You don't need permission. You don't need permission. There is no let in a breakup. I've decided, and this is what's happening. We are not together anymore. I don't want to communicate with you anymore. Hello from Scotland. I love you. Oh, you saved my relationship, my love. I'm here for you. Uh, tips for battling loneliness. Um, get volunteering. Seriously, like, like volunteer at something that you enjoy, something that you're good at. Like give your time to other people so they can learn from you and, and uh, benefit from your talent and your expertise and your knowledge. This is gonna, create more social ties. It's also going to give you a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Tips for being in a five-year relationship at 20 years old. Sounds like you're doing well. If there's any conflict, do get fixed that shit. Remove the conflict. Remove if there's any conflict, do get fixed that shit. Remove the conflict from your relationship. I need help staying in the moment. Past always makes me so glad. If there's any conflict, do get fixed that shit. Remove the conflict from your relationship. I need help staying in the moment. Past always makes me so glad. I'm trying to heal from a 20 year old bitch. Uh, you helped my relationship so much and you've helped my mindset change. My love, thank you. I love this. I love this. Okay. Um, oh, so in love with my husband. This is so beautiful guys you guys do you have any tips for moving away after living with a partner for three years uh moving away moving away um I, do it <laughs> right like i don't find a place that you can afford that you enjoy make sure that it suits you make sure you're going to be happy and comfortable there you don't need to like sometimes people leave a relationship and they get themselves like a you know, like a, like a place that doesn't quite suit them um, because there's a part of them that feels they need to suffer relationship and they get themselves like a, you know, like a, like a place that doesn't quite suit them um, because there's a relationship and they get themselves off relationship and they get themselves like a, you know, like a, like a place that doesn't quite suit them um, because there's a part you don't make sure when you meet them online and been talking for months, if you are getting boyfriend level attention, the no kissing for three months dating rule is how consistent is their attention over the span of three months? If during those three months they are inconsistent with their attention, then it doesn't count. You need three months of, I look at these last three months and this is what I want going forward. This is the level of attention I want. This is a level of intention that I want. And you should be having all kinds of conversations about what your goals are, your timelines are, your fundamental values, the things that absolutely need to align need to be aligned before you kiss somebody. Morning, Mama Queen. Hello, Joshua Jackson. Oh my God, honored. I have fixed that shit at home. Thank you so much, my love. Thank you. Thank you. You guys make me so happy. 
Good morning, my loves. By the way, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram because my next coaching giveaway is coming up. I will be giving away a one hour coaching session there. Thank you, Austin girl, Austin girl for sharing the live. Going through a horrible breakup. He moved out two days ago. I'm struggling. My love get come back queen and no more assholes. These are the two books that are going to help you heal and move forward from this. Ooh, I'm in a 56 year relationship with myself. It keeps getting better. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. You always have so much insight and comforting advice. You're so welcome, my love. What's your advice on people who never had a relationship before but anxious on when's the right time? So it's not about when the right time is. It's about choosing the right person and giving yourself time and space to assess somebody before choosing them for a relationship. This thing about kissing by the fourth date is bullshit and it's stupid. Don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. Because if you if you just wanna hook up, you don't need to know kissing for three months dating role. You don't need to know that much about the person. Do I find them attractive? Can I trust them? That's all you need to know. But if you want a future husband, what are you looking for? They need to align with your fundamental values. They need to be kind, caring, compassionate, consistent with their kindness, their caring, and their compassion. So you use a no kissing for three months dating rule to vet for character and consistency and an alignment of life goals and to make sure they're honest. They're not just saying what they think you want to hear to try and get in bed with you. So grab no more assholes because knowledge is power. This book teaches you how to date and what to look for. Knowledge is power, you guys. Knowledge is power. My boyfriend is perfect. How do I get him to propose? Make sure there's no conflict in your relationship because nobody wants to marry conflict. Have you had a discussion about when you want to get married, when you want to get engaged? Your timelines. If you hadn't, it's time to do that now. Ah, oh, I like that. You're the first live I see when I wake up. Love that. The dress is beautiful. Thank you. Ah, oh, I like that. You're the first live I see when I wake up. Love that. The Thank you. Ah, oh, I like that. You're the first live I see when I wake up. Love that. The dress is beautiful. My wife. Sorry, taken. I got my man. Uh, how long is too long to be a girlfriend and not a wife? It all depends. My husband and I, we got engaged at about. Uh, how long is too long to be a girlfriend and not a wife? It all depends. My husband uh, engaged at about. Uh, how long is too long to be a girlfriend and not a wife? It all depends. My husband. Those of you who are wondering, I do have an audiobook. It is Fix That Shit. You will find it in the link tree in my bio, not on Audible, by the way. Hey, Charlene, you want to come see Mama? Is it rude to invite your boyfriend to someone else's party? Mine got mad because I didn't ask if he could go. Um, it's not. It's, it's absolutely not rude to ask if you can bring your boyfriend to someone else's party. How do you do long distance? So for those of you in long distance relationships, I do have a free guide for you in the link tree in my bio. So go check it out. Go download that. It teaches you how to create intimacy, maintain intimacy, grow intimacy, also resolve conflict. How old were you when you got engaged? Uh, so 39. I was 39 when I got engaged to my second husband. How do you coach full-time, write books, and do social media? You must be so busy. Um, it's, it, it doesn't feel busy because all of it is, is a passion. I do everything with passion, right? So because there's so many aspects to my business, there's the coaching, there's the social media, uh, you know, like you say, the writing books, I can go from one to the other at will. So when I feel like it, I do a live. When I feel like it, I make TikToks. When I feel like it, I write in my books. So it, you know, I, I can, I can kind of just keep rolling from one to the other. And you know, I get up in the morning, I make breakfast, I have my coffee, I read the news, I check my stocks, uh, and I start getting to work and, and, you know, I make meals and I take my downtime when I want it because that's actually super healthy. 
Uh, they found that people who took their breaks were more productive. We got Charlie. Check this out. Check this out. He's not going to be fluffy anymore, you guys. Um, so at noon today, so in, uh, in less than an hour, I'm dropping this guy off at the groomers. And he's going to be naked. Hello, baby. Mama loves you. Yes, that's my good boy. Yeah. Yes, you can go get a haircut. Hello. He's going to go get a haircut. Somebody's getting their freebies. I do have the free book, by the way, as well. Thank you so much for the wonderful advice. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Looking forward to starting your book after a breakup. Mm-hmm. Justice for Charlie. <laughs> Hello from Nova Scotia. Hello, lovely. Hi, mom. Hello, my love. I'm in a three-year relationship. I recently started thinking about how attractive, how attractive other men are. Is that bad? No, it's not. We are not monogamous by nature. It is normal to look at other people and go, hmm, that's nice. Um, it's not cheating, by the way. Cheating is behaviors. Cheating is not thoughts. Yes, that's my baby Charlie. Hello from Alberta. Hello. Hello from Scotland. Hi. Uh, how do you know if your significant uh, other loves you? I always have this fear that he will leave me. Um, by the way, put that into the relationship uh, in any way, shape or form. Confidence is the sexiest trait that is insecurity so don't vomit insecurity when you do that when somebody is loyal and devoted and loves you and has no intention of going anywhere but you keep accusing them of not loving you enough and accusing them of wanting to leave you what they end up like feeling is you you don't know them you don't understand them you don't see them you don't recognize them and we seek to be understood so never give your partner the notion that you don't understand their love and devotion towards you because it creates frustration and if nothing they say or do ever helps you understand who they are how much they love you how devoted they are to you that frustration becomes helplessness there's nothing i can do nothing is changing their mind nothing is is I, there's no way I, I like i keep trying to prove i love them but it's not working and that helplessness becomes hopelessness and once somebody hits hopelessness this is the end of your relationship because now they've lost hope that your relationship can thrive and survive and so they start to look for their exit because everybody wants to be in a relationship with somebody who recognizes the good qualities they bring to their relationship British Columbia in the house. Hello, beautiful BC. Hello, be hello, Allison. Why does emotional cheating hurt more than physical? So this is kind of funny. Um, so there was a movie on TV the other, the other night, and um, my uh, it, it was that one where there was a plane crash, and there was three people in the plane. The pilot died. Um, the two people in the plane survived, um, but they needed to like climb down from the mountain and get back to civilization. And they did. And she was on her way to her wedding. Um, but they ended up, uh, as a couple together. And, um, I, I said to my husband, would, would you rather I survive that plane crash and come back, but leave you and be with that person? And he's like, nope, <laughs> nope. So, um, I, you know, I think it's because at the end of the day, the emotional is more important than the physical. And we understand that on a fundamental level. Physical is easy to achieve. Emotional is more difficult to find somebody that you click with emotionally. It really feels like a greater loss. That's my theory at a fundamental level to find somebody that you click with emotionally. It really feels like a greater loss. That's my theory. I mean, now that I'm ready to get back into the dating scene after three years, no more assholes. Knowledge is power. I'm going to teach you what to look for. I'm going to teach you how to date effectively so that you don't waste any time and you don't get caught up with a selfish short-term thinker. I want you to get with a generous long-term thinker. Do you ever struggle with anxiety? So less now than uh, before I meditated. Before I started meditating, I had so much anxiety 
I, there was times when I just couldn't even stand to be inside of my own body. But uh, now, uh, like every now and then, yes, but like very little and I can deal with it quite effectively and it goes away. Don't go flying anytime soon. I know I don't want to. I do have a podcast. There are links to that in the link tree in my bio. So link to my Spotify, link to my iTunes podcast, uh, link to my podcast platform where I upload them. Uh, look at Alex. Chantal, I may be offered a new job, but scared because it's way across the city and I have driving anxiety. My love, how much are you meditating? Must eat, and start using box breathing too, by the way. So for those of you who have high anxiety, meditation and box breathing, go to my YouTube channel, go to my Let's Meditate playlist. I have a short tutorial, track number one. Track number two is a 10 minute love signal. You can start with that if you don't know where to start. If you go halfway down that list, you're gonna find a tutorial for box breathing. This is an advanced anxiety reduction technique used by Navy SEALs to control fear and anxiety. Uh, Allison, I do suggest you get a coaching session to uh, figure out how to navigate this if you're not immediately thinking you're going to uh, break up with this person. I would suggest you get no more assholes, my love, uh, because either you're going to leave this person and you need to level up, or you're wondering if you should stay with that person, which means you need to assess them on the 12 character traits that are in no more assholes to see if they are a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker. Who made a mistake if he's a selfish short-term thinker you're in for a repeat of this if this is a, a generous long-term thinker who made a mistake um, you can assess that using no more assholes and um, if you want get a coaching session to learn how to emotionally move on from this and also what you should be asking from your partner to negotiate staying in this relationship don't just automatically stay in this relationship this requires a renegotiation because you came into this relationship with monogamy in mind. Have I ever cheated? No. You came into this relationship with monogamy in mind. So um, you need to renegotiate because they broke that contract. So uh, when you come here and hit on me, I block you. What if I feel like I'm with the wrong person? Is Are you with the wrong person or are you not with the wrong person? Is there abusive tendencies? I don't know. Sometimes we become depressed and so uh, we misread our own emotions. Depression also makes it very difficult to make decisions. It literally, depression is, is inflammation in the brain, you guys. So depression can make it difficult to make decisions, make it difficult to understand your own emotions. So I don't know if you're in the wrong relationship or if you're depressed without doing an assessment. So if you if you think or feel or wonder if you're in the wrong relationship, should you stay or should you go, Bella, thank you, um, then uh, get, a, get a session so that I can assess this and help you decide if this is the right relationship um, and you just need to change some things or if you're in the wrong relationship need to get out and start over again and find yourself a generous long-term thinker What if you can't get to get out and start over again and find yourself a generous long-term thinker? To get out and start if you can't get to get out and start over again and find yourself a generous long-term thinker What if you can't a selfish partner you don't need to you don't need to there are there are women with five kids, no education, no work, who figured it out. You can figure it out. My man says his happiness comes first because he can make me happy. Uh, is that the right mindset? Yes, absolutely. Your happiness comes first because we infect each other in a relationship. If you don't understand how to make yourself happy, you cannot look at someone and go, make me happy, because it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. You need to understand how to make yourself happy. When you understand that and you apply that, you bring that happiness to the relationship. This is infection. We are always infecting each other with the vibration we have inside ourselves. So yes, as individuals, we all need to understand how to fulfill ourselves, elevate ourselves, manage our own emotions, love ourselves, 
and we bring that to the relationship and we infect the relationship with what we have created inside of ourselves. He is not wrong. We need, listen, you don't want a grumpy partner. You don't want a messed up partner. You don't want a stressed out partner. You want a happy partner because that helps you have a happy relationship. How do you know if you're the one that's toxic in a relationship? Get fixed that shit. This is gonna highlight all the toxic behaviors you are exhibiting and how to change them. Have you ever considered doing an interpersonal relationship class at a university? I would if it was offered. I would 100% do that if it was offered. Yes. Are you offering, <laughs> Kira? Uh, I figured out that I needed to figure myself out and now we're happy as can be. See, that's beautiful. I have a first date with a woman I've been talking to for a week Saturday. Any tips? Yes. Be chivalrous, open doors, pay um you know uh, what it like you know whatever it is pay for what it like you know whatever it is pay for it um i have a book for you it's called the, what it like you know whatever it is pay for it um i have a i have a book for you it's called the, i have a book for you it's called the perfect play you have time to get it before your date uh it's the first it, it teaches you what you should be looking for. There are some questions. I've got 15 questions you can ask that really help you discover who she is. You can ask some of those questions. It keeps the conversation going. These are outside the box questions, by the way, which is, which is really fantastic if you wanna make an impression. If you wanna show her you're not like other people, then do things that are outside of the standard, outside of what everyone else is doing. Sarah. Sarah was trolling me earlier. Sarah was trolling me earlier. Sarah doesn't think uh, waiting three months for a first kiss makes any sense whatsoever. It's it's just, it's just, who, who would do that? Who's so stupid to wake some, make somebody wait three months for a first kiss? Because I mean, like, if you're looking for, uh, you know, your future baby, baby daddy and your future husband, you, you don't need to know them before you, like, get into that relationship. How do I feel happy? I haven't felt happy in years. So start with your brain structure, your uh, amygdala and your hippocampus. So meditation shrinks your amygdala and increases the size of your hippocampus. So get meditating. So go to my YouTube channel, go to my Let's Meditate playlist, watch that short tutorial at the beginning, and then start listening to the 10 minute love signal with headphones every day. Thank you for your answer. I'm gonna check out that book, awesome. So glad you're here. What's your live schedule? I don't have a schedule. I'm loosey goosey with my lives right now. I'm loosey goosey with my lives right now. By the way, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. Um, I would get a coaching session, but I would probably need more than an hour. <laughs> you can't. You'd be surprised, Allison, uh, how much we accomplish in an hour. You'd be very surprised. Uh, because I don't waste time, right? I don't let people get lost in the story. So um, I don't waste time and I'm very effective. I'm very efficient in a coaching session. Hello, my I do's, I see you. So those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say, I just did, because we like to know who joins us. Love that. Morning live and I'm not working. Aren't we so lucky today? I'm going to do more morning lives probably. Because uh, I just bought it, but it says it was deleted and I don't know what to do now. You just bought what, my love? You just bought what? What is this about? I don't see any previous messages. So I don't know what you bought. Just did. Yay. Certified catfish, don't know what that's about. Uh, is it not a bank holiday in Canada? No, I think that was last Monday. Uh, I just did, well, no, I think that was last Monday. Uh, I just, no, I no, I think that was last Monday. Uh, I just did, welcome, I love, love it, love it. Willie, thank you for following the host. 
uh, I can't stay too long. I have to go. I got another 15 minutes. Um, and then I have to uh, drop Charlie off. I have to go drop Charlie off. Is 30 too old to find someone? No, not at all. I, I coached a woman who was in her 60s into a relationship. My just is welcome. Hello, my loves. Is your YouTube the same username as your TikTok? Yes. Yes. If you type Canada's dating coach uh, into Google, uh, you're going to find so, so many ways to find me. Um, but I have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram page. Don't forget to go follow me on Instagram, you guys, so you can sign up for that coaching giveaway I do every month. The next one's coming up soon. Uh, just, oh, I love this. Uh, hey, you're so cool. I'm also trans. Just starting my journey. So you inspire me, my love. I'm here for you. Here for you. I love it. Love it. Love it. Welcome, welcome. Everyone on TikTok keeps saying 30 is past prime for women. Blech. Uh, not true. So not true. Like, dude, come on. I'm 48. Do I look past prime? Hell no. Could you please give some insight on a partner who refuses to respect boundaries and needs? Don't stay in that relationship. Like, just refuses to respect boundaries? Go. You need to go. You need to go. Don't stay with somebody who doesn't respect your boundaries. Thank you so much for your time. You're so welcome. No more assholes. I bought it on Kindle, but it won't let me read it. Um, so you need to contact Amazon. If if you bought this from Amazon, then you do need to contact them and have them rectify this problem for you. Are you French? Actually, I am, but that was a cute pickup line. It's hard to rekindle a relationship after a year break. Uh, is it hard? I'm maybe maybe not it all depends on the individuals but if you are i do suggest you get in to fix that shit because you don't want to fall back into what broke you guys up before don't fall back into the same drama and and dysfunction uh katie Perry and lady gaga are in the 30s are in their prime yes does couple therapy really work it depends who you get um, I do, and also it depends how far gone you are, right? Like if somebody is done, then couples therapy isn't necessarily going to you are, right? Like if somebody is done, then couples therapy isn't necessarily going to work. And I, I've seen this too many times where couples come to me, but like one person is desperately trying to hold on to them many times where couples come to me but like one person is desperately trying to hold on to the relationship and many times where couples come to sh so always do it before it gets disastrous um but uh, i do couples coaching and it can be very helpful if the two of you still love each other and want this to work thank you for being interactive with your fans you're such an inspiration for me as a psych student you're so welcome my love it is my pleasure it is absolutely my pleasure. Both do need the same goal, yes. Uh, what do you do when your boyfriend shows love and affection and then it dies? It's a constant cycle. Um, this to me sounds like a coaching session so that I can do a deeper dive into your relationship and better understand what's going on and give you the tools to navigate this either to be able well, both, both to be able to get yourself through the receding moments. So he's like waves on a beach, right? So, so when he comes, this is great. When he recedes, you feel distraught. So I'm going to give you the emotional tools to move past those moments where he recedes and you feel distraught. I'm also going to give you some tools that are going to actually create more intimacy during the times when he does recede. Nene, thank you for sharing the live. Good morning, my loves. Who wants a book walkthrough? Who wants a book walkthrough? Guys, I wrote nine books. I'm waiting for number nine to come. 
uh, I ordered I ordered a copy of the last book I wrote which is a perfect play which is the dating book for men so I'm waiting for that in the meantime I'm holding eight of my books do you guys want me to do a book walkthrough any advice on trusting too early using no kissing no sleepovers no sex for three months dating rule and that way you know you might trust too early but you're creating a time and space boundary that keeps you from making a mistake I love one. Okay, girlfriend lies with words, actions completely opposite, dismissive, silent treatment, projection. Uh, you can get into fix that shit. Um, you can get the perfect play. Use those 12 character traits. Figure out if she's a selfish short term thinker and if it's worth staying in this relationship or not. You can come get an assessment um, from me, do a coaching session so that I can do an assessment, see if uh, this is worth uh, staying in, if it's fixable. Uh, so Keith is gone. That's, we don't need to worry about Keith. Keith immediately got yeeted. Yes, you guys want a uh, book walkthrough? Book walkthrough, sounds very good, thank you. I'll definitely keep that in mind once I decide to get back into the game, yes. Okay, so book walk through for my loves. So Comeback Queen is a book that helps you get over a breakup. If your heart is still hurting from your last relationship, this is the book that's going to help you heal. Uh, no More Assholes is going to help you make sure the next relationship is with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. So yeah, no drama. After the First Kiss is going to help you solidify that relationship, transition from the courtship phase to the reality phase. Fix that shit is going to remove conflict from your relationship. That baggage that, you know, was created because your parents weren't good role models, your exes were jerks, um, that insecurity that you're carrying with you. This is going to help you heal your, your pain, your emotional turmoil, help you understand how to control your emotions, not vomit into your relationship, have conflict resolution tools so that when you need to talk about something with your partner, you don't have um, defensiveness going on, which means you can be productive in your conversations. Also understand your partner a whole lot better. This is my bestseller because this book is seriously gold, you guys, relationship gold in here. Uh, Custom Made is going to help you understand what your purpose and passion is if you don't know it. We need to exercise a purpose. If we don't know what our purpose is, we tend to make our partner our purpose that is dysfunctional because then we get upset if they don't spend all their time with us. So this book helps you understand what your purpose is. I also teach you how to monetize it. This is a workbook. Every chapter ends with exercises to really get you understanding yourself and working through yourself and your fears and obstacles. Um, Dating 101, this is a book that I wrote for high schools, this is this should be like the high school textbook for sex ed. So if you want to understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love, this is the book you want to read. Uh, Fake Love You Not Apply, this is How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. This is a free ebook. If you go into the link tree in my bio, if you click that free book button, this is the one you get. For uh, those of you who want to understand how to have a happy life, say yes to goodness. This is 10 areas of your life that affect you and how to navigate them with the right perspective so that you are happy, happy, happy. Uh, I just learned the meaning of reactive abuse and that's what my boyfriend is doing, but it's hard to leave. So as long as you tell yourself it's hard to leave, then it's hard to leave. Change a dialogue in your head, you start changing your life. Those of you who want to get my books, you can get them on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. But if you want an audio book, it's only Fix That Shit right now. No More Assholes is coming out in June. Um, so the Fix That Shit audiobook is narrated by me and you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. If anyone here is stuck in a victim of uh, oh, it stuck as a victim of domestic violence. What is your number one advice for them to get out? Like go get your place. If you don't have money to get a place, get a job. Um, if you have the kind of partner that doesn't let you get a job, then go stay at someone's house. 
but leave, right? Leave. There, there are so many women who are abused daily, who have children, no job, no money, who leave. If you are saying it's too hard, I can't do it, you are the one getting in your own way. If you say to yourself, I need to leave, how am I going to do it? Then you start doing the research. So start telling yourself, I am leaving. How am I going to do this? And get into the research. Go find those resources. Go get that job. Go find somebody's house to go to. But get out. Don't victimize yourself by telling yourself, I can't. Because you are the one keeping yourself there. So stop this internal dialogue where you tell yourself there's nowhere to go. There's nothing I can do. There's so many people who've been in a worse situation than you who have left. So make it happen. But stop telling yourself it's too hard. Uh, how do you recommend a single mom of a three-year-old starting to date after three years of being single? So first, grab no more assholes. This is where it starts. You need to learn how to manage your mindset, manage your emotions, date effectively. Use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Um, don't kiss somebody who hasn't met your child yet. So if, if you're still spending time with somebody at the two month mark and you like who this person is, they are consistent in their behavior, then go grab ice cream with your kid, go for a walk with your kids, see how they interact together. If they're not getting along, don't kiss that person. By the way, parents never leave your children unattended with an unrelated male, never, never. So whoever you meet, mom, they're not your future babysitter, okay? You, like, don't do that. My baby daddy is taking his new girlfriend out and posting it after a week. I can't help being angry. So uh, here's the thing. This is your ex. This is your ex. So this is your ego. This is your ego that doesn't like it. After this is your ex. This is your ex. You need to not let ego get in the way. Get fix that shit. Learn how to co-parent with peace and and cooperation. Use the tricks in this book to have peace and cooperation in your co-parenting relationship. This isn't about you anymore. You need to co-parent well for the sake of your child. So stop vomiting your ego because your child is picking up on this. Get your ego out of the equation and start co-parenting. Me and my girl broke up because we were toxic and now I feel like I can treat her right and be loyal. So now you feel it, but what's to prove it? Just because you feel it, just because you think it, how can she know that for sure? How can you prove that to her? It is up to you to figure out how to prove that. It's not up to her to take you back and hope that you actually follow through with what you think you can do. Because uh, she has every right to not trust you. Right? She has every right to not trust you. Love the makeup and outfit. Thank you. My ex and I decided to start over. How do I have a healthy relationship with him? So what you want to do is grab fix that shit and do what is in fix that shit. This is literally the book on how to relationship. I'm scared to tell my boyfriend that I may not be able to have kids because he really wants kids. My love, that is so mean. That is so absolutely mean. Go to the doctor get the diagnosis, um, get checked for whatever you need to get checked for. Like, you know, what makes it a maybe? What are your chances? Get all the facts and go talk to him. It's not fair to be in a relationship knowing you may have a difference in fundamental values because of your physical condition and not communicating that to him. It is absolutely unfair and deceitful and that deceit needs to end. He needs to get into a relationship that is right for him. And if you hold him back from what he wants in his life, you are responsible for the misery you cause and it's not fair. Should I be in a relationship with a guy who hit his socials? No, you should not. 
No, you should not. Uh, why three months without a kiss versus other timetable? Example, one month, two months, etc. This is a really good question. Uh, so basically, we've all heard about the honeymoon period, right? The honeymoon period tends to last about three months. The reason why it lasts about three months is because Mother Nature designed you as a creature designed to procreate. Your fertility cycle is a couple days. So three months of your chemicals being extra jacked up, oxytocin, dopamine, um, uh, serotonin, three months of you being extra jacked on this person means lots of procreation opportunities, means potentially making a baby to ensure the survival of the species. This is your coding. This is your biological body that's designed to procreate, not your logical mind. So basically what I'm saying is if you're choosing a long-term partner, your future baby daddy, the person you're gonna buy a home with, in other words, major financial decisions, the future husband that you want, what is your criteria? What are you looking for in a partner that's going to do all this effectively, productively, peacefully with you? You need to see all those characteristics before you kiss and get into a relationship. Otherwise, you're going to waste time. You're going to go into the honeymoon state. You're going to kiss. All these chemicals that are already hijacked in your body get ultra hijacked when you introduce the kiss chemical. Everybody's lips are kiss chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips. The combination is a chemical called phenylethylamine. It's an aphrodisiac. It is an amphetamine. It is an antidepressant. When you introduce the kiss chemical with a stranger, you think they are amazing. You think you know everything you need to know because you feel amazing about them. And so you fool yourself and you miss all the red flags until the honeymoon period dies off. Now you're three months, four months into a relationship and those red flags are surfacing. But you say, oh, those first three months were so good. If I try harder, we could make this work. And so then you spend another three, four, five, six, seven months trying to make it work. Now you're getting close to a year into a relationship with somebody that if you had not kissed in those first three months and seen those red flags, you probably wouldn't have kissed them. So the whole point is to not waste time getting into a relationship with somebody that you wouldn't have kissed if you'd waited three months for a first kiss. So you're rising above your biological body and using your logical mind to find the right partner. Oh, gonna finally break up with him. Right now, thank you for giving me the courage, my love. It's this freedom bell. Oh, my love, I'm here for you. I am here for that courage, absolutely. How to divide housework when the couple work the same hours but pay is different? So first of all, this is something that needs to be discussed before you move into somebody who's going to be responsible for what. Um, just because somebody uh, makes more money, by the way, doesn't mean they need to spend more money. When you guys are budgeting for your household, you need to look at the person who makes the lesser amount of money if you guys are gonna split things 50-50. If somebody says, I want to do less housework, so I will pay more of the financial burden, then fine. You can take that money that you save and pay somebody to do their share of the housework. But if you guys are going to split things 50-50, you need to look at who's making less money and have a lifestyle that matches their income. And the person who's making more money can put their money aside. Uh, saving time, but lots ain't gonna wait exactly. Lots are not going to wait, and now, and now you ain't got a date. No, I, first of all, I don't want lots. I'm looking for my future husband. I'm looking for the diamond in the rough. I'm looking for the extraordinary man, not the ordinary guy. So that's the whole point of using a no kissing for three months dating rule. The ordinary guy is gonna walk away. I want him to. I want the extraordinary man to come into my life. I don't know what you want, but I love extraordinary men. They are amazing, they are awesome, they are solid, they are loyal, they are devoted, they're honest, they're hardworking, 
they make me laugh more than anybody else they're the best thing in the world so yeah I want lots to walk away I don't want to be out on a date when the extraordinary man is looking for me I want to be available I want him to find me because I'm not caught up with ordinary guys do you help guys I do why do guys move on so quickly because that's all they wanted because they weren't there for a long time they were there for a good time What does it mean if someone kissed you then says it didn't mean anything romantically? It means you didn't wait until you were actually bonded with somebody before having that first kiss. You didn't wait until you found out if the two of you actually wanted a committed long-term relationship. You didn't wait until they got to know you well enough that they started falling for you before they had a kiss. So what it means is that you didn't use a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure you were kissing the right person. I'm having a hard time talking and dating a bunch of guys at the same time. Uh, if you're using no kissing for three months dating rule, it's certainly a lot easier. Terrible advice. Oh my God. Really? Oh well. I guess you just don't belong here. Uh, it wouldn't work if the three months are half internet, half in person. If you are getting like boyfriend level attention, because the whole three months is, is basically assessing what am I getting into, right? What am I getting into? Because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you look at the last three months and say, I got the attention that I wanted. I got the communication that I wanted. I, I feel like I'm part of their life then it counts. Is long distance after college worth it? It depends on the people. What does it mean when a guy says he doesn't know how he feels about us? It depends on the situation. This would require me to um, to do a deep dive in order to help you understand the situation, I would have to ask a lot of questions about what's actually happening behavior wise. So if you wanted clarity on that, you would need to get a coaching session. Hello, love. The boy I liked body shame me, so write him off, my love. Goodbye. Goodbye. I like that you wrote light as in past, past tense. That's good. Uh, thank you, my love. Dating someone with different political views. So this is what's happening between me and my husband. I'm a liberal, he's a conservative. We definitely have very different political views. We don't talk politics. Hello, baby. Charlie got a haircut, you guys. Hello. <laughs> Who is here for my morning live? Um, so yeah, we don't talk politics, right? You can have different values and respect each other's differences. This is what happens between my husband and I. Even though we have different values, we still respect each other. So he doesn't try to talk me into his values. I don't try to talk him into my values. We respect that we can be different and, and still have respect for each other. Um, and so just don't talk about politics. We don't talk about politics at all. Academic backgrounds, sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, behaviorism. Uh, spirituality and philosophy. So, uh, Katina, if you wanted some clarity on your situation, I would suggest a coaching session so that I can get the answers that I need in order to better understand your situation and help you understand how to navigate it. Hello, Brie. We focus on common ground, yeah. So so we have zero discussions about politics. Uh, 
I don't know what if you have kids I don't know what that's related to unfortunately guys you can't give me puzzle pieces like I need I need a full idea just in the one box because I can't associate something that you said earlier to something you say later uh, my boyfriend went out of town this week without telling me and doesn't get why I'm upset thoughts um, I, I would suggest a coaching session so that I can better understand your relationship because this doesn't make any sense to me. Which of your books would you recommend for someone who wants to work on themselves before dating again? I would recommend No More Assholes. There is homework in here, right? How to manage your emotions, how to calm your mind so that you're not anxiously seeking a partner, um, how to elevate your self-esteem, how to elevate your confidence because you need to level yourself up to find a leveled up partner. Uh, so No More Assholes is the ideal book on working on yourself before getting into a relationship. Plus it teaches you how to get into a relationship and what to look for so that you're not blindly seeking your next partner when you are ready to do that. My partner entertains girls who likes him. I wouldn't stay in that relationship. I wouldn't be in a relationship with somebody who keeps ego strokes around. You're welcome, my love. Should we not date broke men? I have a great career, but I have debt. Um, should we not date broke men? Here's the thing. I don't want you to get in a relationship and be a mom, right? So get in a relationship and have a child. You have to monitor how they spend their money. You have to make up the income that they're not uh, bringing. So in other words, you have to financially support them. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. That's okay. But I advise people get into relationships with hardworking people who are financially responsible. Um, but you know, debt can be reduced, right? If you are financially responsible and you work hard at reducing debt. Is it okay to skip church and go to Dollywood instead? 100%. 100%. Trying to build myself back up. Heartbreaking, yes. If you need help with that, you can get a coaching session. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I am giving away a one hour coaching session very soon. I do this every single month. So do also check me out on Instagram. Is there anybody here who wants a, uh, a notification when I go live? So I have a lot of money. I want to marry a girl, but don't want to give her money with a divorce. I signed a prenup. I have nothing against prenups. Um, you know, like, like if you are a fair person, if you are a generous and fair person, um, then she should have no problem signing a prenup. Uh, my husband is a generous and fair person. He has chosen a generous and fair person. So if you are a generous and fair person and you choose a generous and fair person as a partner, you guys should have no problem with the prenup. Anybody who wants to get a coaching session, um, go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's, I think the second button is the coaching button. Click on that, it takes you to a page. Make sure you read everything that's there and follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. I do my I do's I see you okay so those of you who want a notification when I go live click my picture up here once or twice you're gonna get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell click on the bell when you do that say I just did Ms. Riddler follow the host thank you Mm 
Did I overreact by breaking up with my boyfriend for purposefully seeking out pictures of other women to use? Um, it, it, listen, if, if you're not okay with that, then you're not okay with that. Just so you know, um, this is something you need to discuss before getting into a relationship. Because the, these things are fundamental values, right? So that is something that you do need to talk to somebody about before you get into a relationship with them. I just bought fix that shit, hoping to heal my flaws as a single lady before dating again. My love, I got you. I got you. How do I overcome overthinking in our relationship? So fix that shit can help. I also have a no more insecurity program. If you really want to do a deep dive uh, and really get some help with this, because really what you're saying is how do I change how I think? How do I change how I feel? How do I change the behaviors I feel compelled to do? So this is a process. It's not a quickie magic wand answer, but if you are in for the process, if that is something you want to work on, I really do highly suggest the no more insecurity program. So I had discussed this with him before getting into a relationship and he said he wouldn't do it and then he did. So um, he broke his word, right? So you did have a contract, you had boundaries, he accepted your boundaries and then he broke his word. So you did not overreact by breaking up with him, uh, is, is my opinion. You, you had the proper discussion, you made sure you guys were aligned and he was dishonest about that. He was either dishonest then or he chose dishonesty later. Can an avoidant attachment style and anxious attachment style work together in a relationship? Not if you're labeling. So here's the thing. This label is unnecessary. It is adding extra stress to you and what you think about yourself and what you think about your partner and distracting you. So what you need to do is isolate the behaviors that are getting in your way and learn the behaviors that will turn the situation around and make it functional. The label is an unnecessary thing that's added in the middle in order to add more mental illness. So, you know, the thing is the, the mental health industry is basically, it's, it's way too much like the pharmaceutical industry. They want clients. They don't want you to be healed because then you stop paying into it. So this label is, is a great way to add extra emotional distress, extra mental distress, so that you're less focused on the solution and more focused on how wrong you are, in my opinion. We don't need to add this label. You can literally change your brain structure. You can literally change your DNA. So this label is unnecessary because you can change. If we simply focus on the behaviors that are getting in your way, and do the behaviors that will get you out of your own way, then you change the outcome. So can the two of you work together? Are you with a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker? If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you are intent on changing your behaviors for the better, then your relationship will change for the better. Yes, my love, you're so welcome. Does a three month no kissing rule apply if you were already friends with each other beforehand? So this rule is I don't know you. I've never met you before. We just met in Tinder. We just met on Bumble. We just met on Hinge. You are a stranger. I need to know you for at least three months before even thinking you are the right partner for me. So over the course of three months, since you're not kissing and having sex, you're doing a lot of talking, a lot of communicating, a lot of finding out who they are. Because it's three months, which is not too short and not too long, you can test consistency. Yeah, they're great the first few weeks. How long does that stay? You can also test their intent. Somebody who just comes to you with the intent of taking not contributing, not being a partner, not finding a long-term relationship, won't last three months when you have a no kissing for three months dating rule. But if you don't have a no kissing for three months dating rule, then they tell themselves, all I need to do is get by date four. If I can get by date four, I'm gonna get what I want. So I'm gonna say whatever I need to say. 
if you the, listen don't get in a relationship with somebody that you can't introduce as a friend don't get in a relationship with somebody who doesn't introduce you to their friends don't get in a relationship with somebody who doesn't include you in their life i get way too many women coming to me saying it's been eight months he doesn't want to put a label on it it's been eight months i've never been to his place it's been eight months i've never met his friends so all these women are being used. They are in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with them. My job is to help you avoid these scenarios. I have women who are in relationships with people who are abusive, who are controlling. I want you to avoid that. Abusive, controlling people don't hang out for three months not getting what they want when they want it. You will weed out so many negative scenarios by using the no kissing for three months dating rule. Thank you so much. I've been so nervous. This is very relieving. Love, love, love this response. Thank you. Is never being single a red flag? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Is it a red flag to see men 40s and 50s on dating apps that have never been married or have no children? Um, not always, right? Like, like, you know, get to know them. It just means they haven't met the right person, and that's okay. Isn't a lot of this projection? Why not get advice from a man and merely ask what men truly think? So here's the thing. We have way too many male, single dating coaches saying, hey, this is how you get into a relationship. Dude, where's yours? So. As a woman, I'm teaching women how to navigate relationships. There are a lot of men who come to me and say, thank you for what you say, you understand me. If you don't like me as a male, that's a red flag to me. Because what I teach women how to do is avoid people who are controlling, is avoid people who are takers. Um, what I'm saying is not projection. What I'm saying is factually based on science. When you kiss, there is a chemical introduced called phenylethylamine that acts as an aphrodisiac and an amphetamine and an antidepressant. And if you don't know who you're kissing, you suddenly feel like they're the most amazing person in the world. But that's based on what? That's based on a chemical reaction, not knowledge. So this is not projection. This is science. So there's that aspect of it. The second aspect is I never ask people to do anything I haven't done myself. That's my number one relationship rule. And between me and my people, this is a relationship. I'm not asking you to meditate having never meditated. I'm not asking you to reduce depression and anxiety having never reduced depression and anxiety. I'm not asking you to get into the right relationship having never gotten into the right relationship. I'm not asking you to use a no kissing for three months dating rule not having used a no kissing for three months dating rule. And I assure you, this rule helped me get into the right relationship. And by the way, I was a stripper for many years. I know what men think. I spent enough time in the field, having a lot of conversations with men, really getting to understand how they think. Fix that shit, help me and my husband rekindle our marriage, my love. I love hearing this. Love this. Hello, Licky Dog. So happy to see you on again. I need you today. I'm here for you. How do you tell the guy about the no kissing rule or do you not? No, you absolutely communicate it because Basically, what you're saying is I have a goal. My goal is a long-term committed relationship. I have a plan for achieving that goal. I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure I choose the right partner. You want to communicate this before they move in for a kiss because you don't want them to feel rejected. So do make sure you grab no more assholes. I do teach you the science behind this so you can have an intelligent conversation about it. I teach you how to navigate those three months so they don't feel rejected. That is an important aspect. This isn't about you. This is about my decision to make sure I choose the right partner and this is the method I'm using.
What about men that will not kiss? So what does that mean, right? Like, what do you mean men that will not kiss? Like, do you mean like, actually, I don't, I don't understand. What about men that will not kiss? I don't understand what that means. Can you rephrase that? How do I gift your books to loved ones without it being offensive? Um, so uh, with, a, with a really big smile and a laugh and go, I know, I know this title is pretty cheeky, but uh, this is probably one of the best books you're ever going to read because she teaches a lot of scientific ways to achieve a great relationship, but speaks in plain English and talks a lot about her own journey. And she doesn't ask you to do anything she hasn't done herself. She's been in a relationship for 15 years. They fought for 10 years. They haven't had a fight in five years. This girl knows what she's talking about. Can't wait to go home and refix that shit. So addictive. I have people who reach out. They're like, I just got fix that shit. I finished it today. Um, like the, the moment they get it, uh, they start reading and they can't put it down. Uh, shouldn't the kiss just come organically? So here's the thing. If you are going to kiss strangers and hope they are what you're looking for, again, think about what you need in a future baby daddy, a future husband, the person you're gonna make major financial decisions with. When you think about that person, what do you need in that person? Do you need them to be hardworking? Do you need them to be conscientious? Do you need them to be thoughtful? Do you need them to be financially responsible? Do you need them to not be controlling? Do you need them to be confident? Do you need them to be loyal and devoted? So sure, kiss a stranger and hope they're everything you need or take three months to get to know somebody and see if they are what you need and if they're not, then you don't kiss them. Now here's the thing about not kissing. If they're not what you need, it's a conversation, not a breakup. Hey, I'm sorry, this isn't what I'm looking for, but I wish you all the best. If you kiss them, you miss all those red flags for a good three months. So now you're into month four, five, or six before you start realizing they're not what you want in a partner, but how much longer are you gonna stay after that? Trying to make it work before you say, no, this isn't for me. And then it's a breakup. And how do you feel after a breakup? Well, it hurts because I have to mourn the dream I created in my mind of how this relationship was gonna go. So now you have to get over the breakup and get my stuff from his place and his stuff from my place. So how much are you gonna hurt yourself just because you went with your biological body instead of using your logical mind? Oh, I have no more assholes. I'm halfway through. Come back queen. Yes, lovely. Good, good, good. What do you think? What is come back queen about? I haven't been in a relationship since five years ago. So come back queen isn't the one you're looking for unless you're still hurting from your last relationship. This is the book that helps you put your heart back together. How to navigate a relationship with an anxious avoidant person. We don't do labels here. We talk about behaviors. What are the behaviors that are getting in the way? What are the behaviors that are going to change the outcome and make things better? What do you mean not necessarily red flag if they are never single? Uh, so uh, the only time that I was single for a significant amount of time was um, when I took a year off getting in a relationship after three years in an abusive relationship. Um, so I, I didn't stay single for long between boyfriends because the next one would come along. And of course I didn't use a no kissing for three months dating rule for a really long time. So I kept getting into relationships and they were not the right people for me. But uh, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are a destructive person. Doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they are somebody who is bad in a relationship. It, it, so it's just, I, I would, you know, get no more assholes. I would vet them on the 12 character traits rather than how long it's been, you know, them being single in between relationships. Which places do you recommend to meet men? Uh, so, I mean, I do suggest online because this is where you will meet the majority of people who are looking for people. But you can meet men absolutely anywhere. If you are somewhere and you see somebody who looks interesting, go up and approach them and start a conversation, reach out, touch them, break that bubble, and then start a conversation and then say, you know what, I'd love to continue this, but I really have to go. 
you know, let me give you my email address and let's get together and, and continue this and let them know that you're available and you'd like to see them again. I watched your video and it makes so much sense. Thank you. Interesting perspective. Thank you. You're so welcome. How do I not take on trust issues for future? I do have a no more insecurity program that you can come take so I can help you undo your trust issues. Is that Charlie making a ruckus? Actually, it's my Amy. Uh, Amy is my, uh, my helper. Amy helps me out around the house and I've got some painting that I want it done. So Amy's doing some painting for me right now. Men like that are so easily dodged now. Yes, using that no kissing for three months dating rule, like you, you go like, <laughs> it's so good you guys. Uh, can you explain how we schedule the coaching session? Yes, go to my bio, click on the link tree. Uh, you're gonna see, I think the second button is the coaching button, click on that. It takes you to a page. On that page are instructions for booking yourself in for a session. Make sure you follow all the instructions. There's three steps. Make sure you follow the three steps. Kissing changed a lot after 20 years. Um, it's just it's just like the dating rules, those, those dating rules. It's now kiss to see where it goes, but that's putting the little decisions. That's a longer list. It should be a longer list than am I attracted to them and do I trust them, right? There should be integrity. There should be responsibility. So uh, seeing where it goes and figuring them out before you kiss them is much wiser when you're looking for a long-term committed partner. Which book can help guide us to figure out what we need in a partner? Uh, no More Assholes. There are 12 character traits you absolutely need to look at and make sure are there before you choose them for a relationship. They should get at least a 9 out of 12. Thank you. I keep telling myself I've healed, but I don't think I fully have. From what I said before, I just found out that I may have trouble having kids, so I'm not deceitful. So you've shared that with him though, right? Because it's deceitful to not tell him that. I thought it was Charlie, yes. As a man, what's the best way to make my lovers feel special and understood? A uh, really good question. So know her love language, know their love language. That is a really big one. So do a love language quiz at the same time, exchange your results, and you will have better insight into how to feed her love language so that she feels the love you're trying to give her. Do you think couples should be able to use each other's phones? I don't think it should be a problem. Boyfriend broke up with me, but I feel he made a mistake. How do I make him see that? Um, you can't right you can't uh you know perception is reality if he feels he made the right decision then you can't you can't change his mind right he in order for people to change their perspective their perspective they have to be open to their perspective being changed can i find your books on amazon audible no i do have an audiobook and that's fix that shit you can only access it through the link tree in my bio my partner is just straight up mean and does nothing to change, but makes excuses. So why is this your partner? Why is this not your ex-partner? Why do you not have a higher standard for yourself? You need to uh, you know, define what you need in a relationship. And if this isn't it, you need to exit this so that you can get into the right relationship for yourself. Use no more assholes to guide you through that process. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. And the pandemic has stranded me four hours from all resources. Hmm. 
ever since we got our dog in November, my fiance and I have been bickering and frustrated. What can I do? I would say grab fix that shit and start doing what's in this book to calm everything down. Do you think exes can be friends? Yes, if they are platonic, if there's no more residual feelings, if if there isn't one, like somebody who wants to still be with the other person. So if the two of you are done with your relationship and are simply platonic towards each other, then yes, you can stay friends. If you kiss somebody after your bro boyfriend broke up with you and then you ended up getting back, should you tell them? No, that's your business. What you did while you were single is your business. I love your content. Thank you. Love from the UK. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love the love. I love the love. Thank you, lovely. That's a relief. Thanks. Wasn't sure whether to say something or not. You don't need to. It is your business. You weren't together. This is your business. Guys, if you want a notification when I go live, uh, click on my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. If you click on that bell, say, I just did, so we know you're joining us. I just have to say, one of your quotes lives in my head rent free. Which one, my love? Thank you, nature. What's the best way to say to a person who keeps on lying? Say goodbye. You, you say goodbye. Like, you don't, like, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If this person has created a um, pattern of lying, you can anticipate more lying. Do you want to stay in a relationship with a liar? If the answer is no, end this relationship. You don't come into a relationship to change people. You don't come into a relationship to fix people's behaviors. You should choose the right partner and get into that relationship. If you realize you've gotten into a relationship with a liar and you don't want to be in a relationship with a liar, then you leave this relationship. Tips on embracing our feminine energy. Uh, find role models. Find role models and really like dive into um, how they present themselves, the body language, the way they dress, the way they do their makeup. Like I learned to do makeup by studying, you know, like my color eyes and how the makeup was done and emulating that. So uh, imitation is a great way to become. It's the fake it till you make it method. So find yourself some role models and study how they move, study how they dress, study how they do their makeup and start emulating that. Tarte, by the way, T-A-R-T-E, is amazing makeup. I love their makeup line. Um, so they're, I, I, I just do cheeks, lips and eyes. I'm, I'm low key, you guys. Like I'm as low maintenance as you can possibly get. Um, so just do eyes, like blush, um, mascara, lip gloss, lip tint, and you got it, girl. And you got it. Uh, what, do you do? what do you do if you're pushing to get engaged, but your boyfriend of five years hasn't proposed yet? I'm 24. So go to him with your timeline. Hey, baby, I've been doing some thinking. And this is when I want to get married. This is when I want to get engaged by. What do you think? And then get him to answer that question. And if his timeline doesn't match up with yours, or if he says, I don't know, then you say, I need to be in a relationship with somebody who matches my goals and timelines. And if, if we don't match up in our fundamental values, 
then I'm in the wrong relationship. What are your thoughts on a partner that keeps breaking his promises? Best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. You have a pattern. Don't stay for the pattern. If you want to get in a relationship with somebody who means what they say and say what they mean and stands by their words and follows through on what they say, this is not the one for you. And the guy says your opinion doesn't matter and you can't control him, is it best to leave? Uh, so you can't control him, he's right, right? We don't get into relationships to control people. We get into relationships with the people who are right for us. So you don't get into a relationship to change somebody. So he's right, you can't control him. This is something I say over and over again. We cannot control other people's behavior, nor should you be trying to control their behavior. But your opinion doesn't matter, uh-uh. <laughs> Goodbye, motherfucker because I want to be in a relationship with somebody who respects what I say, who's interested in what I say. So your opinion doesn't matter. It's his way of trying to diminish you. This is abusive. Don't be in a relationship with an abusive person. Any advice on not saying mean things when someone is angering you? How do I stay calm? Uh, get fixed that shit my love this is the book that's going to help you manage your emotions and your behaviors if you do what's in this book this will help you tremendously and the great thing about this book is a lot of people say this was written for relationships but by using the tactics in this book i was able to make all of my other relationships better my work relationships my friend relationships my family relationships I did tell this with my boyfriend. I gave him an age. So bring it back up and say, baby, remember when we had this discussion? I'm wondering where we're at with this. I question my partner's loyalty, even though he's never shown any unfaithful behavior. Come take my No More Insecurity program before you vomit so much insecurity into your relationship that you drive him away. Should you always let a man pay on the first date? Yes. So, you know, look, look, always look to offer, always look to offer, but when he insists, let him. And so the word let is, is very key here. I can pay my way. I have money. We can pay our way. We have money, but we want to be in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. So if he wants to be generous with you, you letting him be generous is you letting him be the man he wants to be. So yes, let him, but reciprocate. Look for ways that you can be reciprocal in your behaviors. Okay. Looking forward to reading it, good. Is broken promises enough to go no contact? Sure. Will it make him realize I'm not standing for it anymore? 100%. Uh, men should approach women or women should take the first step? Both, both. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you shouldn't cross the room. Go touch somebody's arm start a conversation, let them know you like to see them again, and give them your contact information. If you are interested in somebody, doesn't matter what your gender is, approach, have a conversation, let them know you like to see them again. What if he fakes cheating texts? He says he didn't do it, just wanna see if you noticed. Uh-uh, that's bullshit. That's, that's a story, my love, that's not the truth. Not the truth, that's a story. Don't believe it. Did you write books about relationships? Yeah, eight of them. 
eight, eight books about relationships. Uh, actually, I call these my babies. I gave birth to each of these one by one. Actually, two at the same time though. Come back, Queen and Fix That Shit I wrote simultaneously. That's a little crazy, I know. Uh, what did you think about the book by Steve Harvey, Ike Like Lady, Think Like a Man? This is what got me using a no kissing for three months dating rule. He says no sex for three months, but as a sociologist, I was like, why is it that when I kiss, I'm just all in with one person? Um, because it's not just the sex that gets you all in, it's the kiss. If you go, if you go on a date with somebody, it's date one, two, three, or four, right? And you kiss that person on the first, second, third, or fourth date. And the next day somebody says, can I take you out? Most of us women say, no, I'm seeing somebody. And my question was, and don't forget, life begins when you ask the right question. My question was, why is it when I kiss, I'm not going to go out and have a date with somebody else. So then I started um, researching the chemicals that are produced in a kiss and the effects those chemicals have on your physical body and on your brain. And that's why I realized that kissing has a major impact on you. I didn't just see it in our behaviors, I studied the impact it had on your physical body. So this is why I took it a step further and I said no kissing for three months because I wanted to keep a clear head. No sex doesn't keep you uh, in a clear state of mind. Kissing produces so many chemicals, it's the difference between snorting cocaine and doing heroin. Do you sell these books in the UK? Yes, you guys can get my books on Amazon. If there's Amazon in your country, you can get my books. So just go on Amazon in UK and you can find my books, my love. Uh, do you believe in relationship attachment styles? 100% no. It is an unnecessary step. Let's talk about attachment styles. So with the attachment style theory, they go, okay, let's look at your behaviors. Now we're gonna assess your behaviors. We're gonna give you a label and then we're gonna tell you what behaviors you need to do in order to, to get a better outcome. Here's what I do. Okay, let's talk about the behaviors that are getting in your way. Okay, now let's talk about the behaviors that are gonna change the outcome and make you happy. I remove the label, but we have the same outcome. And here's the thing, a lot of the people using attachment theory um, are not talking about meditation straight off the bat. Like, how can you not tell people to start meditating as step one? to reduce anxiety. Meditation literally shrinks the part of your brain that produces stress, fear, and anxiety. It reduces your capacity to feel those emotions. If you get yourself a therapist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and by the end of the second session, they're not getting you to start meditating, stop seeing them because all they want is your money. They don't wanna help you, they don't wanna fix you, they want you to keep showing up so they can take your money. I am unusually afraid to approach a man in fear he's in a relationship. So here's the thing, some people might be in a relationship and lie about it. So that's why you use a no kissing for three months dating rule. If you haven't been to his place, if you haven't met his friends before three months is up, do not kiss him. Does never living together work, especially when both have kids from previous relationships? Never living together works perfectly fine for some people. If both of you are aligned in not wanting to share a home together, then it works. I'm studying neuroscience and you can change your attachment style with mindfulness and meditation exactly, which is why we don't need to assign a label. We simply focus on the behaviors and what are the behaviors that are gonna change how you feel, change how you think, and change how you behave. How did you and your husband meet? I used to be a stripper and he was my client. You can, you can not only change your brain structure, uh, you can change your DNA. 
So this is why I'm, I'm so opposed to attachment theories because people tend to carry that label like an STD. It adds an extra dose of heaviness to their mental and emotional well-being. So not only do they, you know, are they focused on, on trying to fix themselves, but now they have to try and fix this label that they've attached to themselves. And um, I, just, I just don't think we need to do that. I don't think we need to add an extra dose of negativity to the negativity you're already experiencing. I think we're gonna lift you up a whole lot faster if we just focus on the behaviors rather than focusing on a label that, you know, for some people really makes them feel bad about themselves. Mudslide. Hello, loves. I feel repulsed being touched on the shoulder because of childhood trauma. How do I stop? You can uh, get friends. You can get people that you know and trust to help you desensitize. And uh, you can start meditating. Start meditating and have people touch your shoulder while you keep putting yourself in a meditative and peaceful space. I had the weirdest conversation with my ex. I feel boundaries are weird. Uh, if you don't know how to navigate the relationship with your ex, you can always get a coaching session. Or you can simply stop talking to them. Right? You don't need to talk about your environment as though you have no control. If you are uncomfortable continuing to communicate with your ex, then you can simply stop communicating with them. You don't have to communicate with them just because they're communicating with you. Uh, my thoughts on EMDR therapy, I haven't studied it at all, so I really don't have any opinions about it. Ah, oh, you're so cute. Thank you. Don't Doesn't feel like your advice should be free, too valuable. I, I do give a lot away. I've got this, I've got over 3,000 TikToks, I've got my YouTube channel, I've got a podcast, I've got a free book, there's a free long distance guide, there's in the meditation resource button, there's a free meditation guide. So I give a lot away because I want everybody to be okay and I don't want it to have to be dependent on money. For people who do want to really work through their problems, um, their individual triggers, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching um, or books are a really cheap way for them to get all the information they need in one place. And an ebook is about $10. I've been practicing meditation and even watched your videos. I haven't been able to achieve it. Um, so uh, if you do want help with your meditation practice, come get a coaching session so that um, I can find out what it is you're having trouble with and give you the tools you need to navigate through those sticky spots. I do get a lot in return, my love. I am very happy. Like, like it's so emotionally rewarding when the feedback that I get from you guys is I've been watching your videos, I watched your lives, I had the courage to leave an abusive relationship, uh, my marriage is so much better, I rekindled our relationship, we haven't had a fight in a year. Like this, the emotional return is amazing. I am making enough money to be okay the emotional return is like it just outweighs everything i could be making millions of dollars a year that emotional return means everything to me because my goal is to change how we function we all of us i want all of us to get on a better route when it comes to mental and emotional well-being and how our relationships are working out because when our relationships work well we have a superpower because when our relationships aren't working well, we are preoccupied, our minds are spinning. And so that's a lot of focus that you're not using towards fulfillment and helping other people and happiness. 
So really my goal is to make sure that this generation and the next one and the next one and the next one relationship better so that people are happier and are more productive and are more fulfilled. This book here, Custom Made, is all about teaching you how to be productive with your passion, with your talent, so that ultimately you get paid doing what you love. I'm getting paid doing what I love. I get up every single day ready to work. Like every, every like there's no there's no weekend for me. I work every single day and I'm happy to work every single day. And I'm happy that I work at my own job because those moments where I do want some downtown, I, I can take my downtime because I am my own boss. But I make enough doing what I love to be able to pace myself out the way I want to. And I really appreciate that. Hello, Dao. Welcome back. What do you think about a guy who breaks up with his girlfriend because she's friends with his ex-girlfriend? That sounds immature. He broke up with me because I was smothering him. How do I win him back? What we had was beautiful. I would get uh, fix that shit and custom made and read these books to gain perspective on how to be more independent and healthy in a relationship. This can give you the plan you need to go to him and say, baby, I'm so sorry I did that, but I now understand how to be healthy in a relationship. My boyfriend has commitment issues and decided to take a break from us of 10 years. He says he's 99% sure. So listen, don't stay in limbo. Grab no more assholes and start applying what's in that book and start defining your next relationship and looking for it. Don't stay in limbo. Do you earn commission if people buy the books on your wall? Yes, I do. Uh, so it's, um, it's called a royalty. So for every book you guys buy, I get a royalty. So, uh, Moon, if you wanted some help with your situation, I would suggest a coaching session. I would just need to understand more, uh, in order to be able to, uh, help individual situations. Cause I need to do a deep dive into the behaviors that are happening. Thank you for your honesty. You're welcome, Abby. Hello. I love seeing the guys pop up on my page and do their little vomits because they're so upset that I'm telling women to wait three months for a first kiss because they seriously see that as... Um, Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. Please try again in a moment. Shh. They, ser they seriously see me as getting in the way of their potential opportunities. Oh no, I can't just take advantage of women anymore. They're going to wait and figure me out. Oh no, I don't like that. You're so welcome, love. Is it okay to approach a man first if you're interested in him? 100% it is. Do you grab no more assholes? I teach you uh, what I call the hit and run flirting technique. Good advice so far. Thank you. I am married, been with my partner for 15 years, with my husband for 15 years. We haven't had a fight in five years. How do you avoid bringing previous toxic coping mechanisms into the new relationship? I would suggest you get a coaching session, my love, uh, or you can get Fix That Shit. This is the manual on how to relationship in a healthy way. I've been with my boyfriend since I was 15. I see myself marrying him. Is it bad to only ever be with one person? No, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. If that makes you happy, there's nothing wrong with it. 
Someone said if a guy tells you he's looking for a relationship, it's a red flag. Why? I don't know why that person said that. I don't know why they're trying to turn you off. The people who are actively looking for what you want, which is a relationship, if you're looking for a relationship. Um, so they're, they're wrong. Uh, there are plenty of men who, when they're ready for a relationship, they're ready for a relationship. There are plenty of men who know they want to be fathers and they're looking for that woman that will create a family with them. So the person who said that is very wrong. My dad would always say to wait a season before you do anything with someone to see true colors. And how long is a season? There's four seasons, three months. Your dad is right. I worry about my partner cheating and me not finding out, but I hate being so hyper-focused on it. I would suggest a coaching session to work through that, my love. A woman said that on TikTok. Uh -uh. Because they want to fill a void. He, no, my love. We are designed to live together in tribes. So people who say you have to be okay being alone are wrong. Our design is to be a pack animal, not to be a solo animal. We are also designed to want to pair up. So there is a strong instinct to find your mate. Some people are very aware of their instinct to find a mate. They want to start a family. They're looking for that mate. So it's not to fill a void. It's, it's to fill their desire to start their family. Should you fight for someone you love if they seem like they don't want to stay? No, never. Never, never chase down a person who's running away from you. Exactly. So somebody said, just be worried about disingenuous people and not those looking for a relationship. Exactly. Now, some people might say they're looking for a relationship, but it's not actually true. They're just saying what they think you want to hear to try and get what they want. Again, this is where the no kissing for three months dating rule comes in really handy because people who are just paying lip service, people who are not actually honest about what they're saying, um, they won't last the whole three months. You're, you're going to figure them out. I feel that. Thank you. My friend is in a toxic relationship. How do I help her? Get her a copy of No More Assholes. Um, but that's pretty much all you can do. We can't change other people's minds for them. We can't make people stop practicing willful ignorance, um, right? Avoiding the truth. So we, we can't make them do that. They have to come to that conclusion themselves, but you can get them no more assholes and see if that helps give them perspective. Uh, thank you for clearing that up. You're so welcome, love. Any tips on how to know when a romantic connection is real and healthy, not just because of trauma bonding? So if you use a no kissing for three months dating rule, and over the course of three months, you see that they are kind, compassionate, consistent, patient, caring, they show up, they are generous. Um, this is how you gain the confidence you need to step into a relationship. And if you go into an insecurity phase in that relationship, you get to look at those three months and say, he didn't need to stay while I wasn't kissing him, but he did. He didn't need to keep showing up while I wasn't kissing him, but he did. He showed me who he was. He introduced me to his friends. I have confidence in this person because of what I've learned about them over the course of three months. Do get no more assholes, my love, to understand who to look for and how to date effectively. Is sending flowers to her house when on a break manipulation or just kindness? Um, it's hard to say without doing a coaching session. I don't know what went on um, because it, it all depends on what happened. I've been told you need to be alone so many times. I le legitimately want a healthy long-term thing. Yeah, you, you, you can heal a lot in a relationship, but you need to get in the right relationship. How alone you are makes zero difference to your next relationship it makes zero difference if you spend five years alone and then use the same tactic you use
to find your last partner, to find your next one, you're playing Russian roulette. If you're doing the kiss to see where it goes, it's Russian roulette. What are you gonna get? I don't know. And Russian roulette, by the way, in five chambers, it's gonna be one empty chamber and four bullets. So kissing to see where it goes is a high risk way of getting into a relationship. Seeing where it goes and kissing the right one is a low risk way of getting into a relationship. So it doesn't matter how long you stay single. What matters is how you choose your next relationship. So get no more assholes and make sure you choose a partner the right way with knowledge and insight and confidence about who they are. Did you do the no kissing for three month rule with your husband? So by mistake, well not by mistake, but unintentionally, yes, because I was actually married when I met him. And then we got together and we broke up a few times. And then I used that rule on purpose when I dated two different people during our breaks. So I actually dated other people, but I didn't kiss them because I was using the no kissing for three months dating rule and he won me back before I kissed those people. And by the way, had I not been using that rule, I would have kissed the first one because there was no reason not to. Um, he was kind, considerate, thoughtful, generous, had his shit together, successful, handsome, no reason not to. But my husband won me back and here I am today. Isn't three months too long? No because the chemical high produced with newness when two people meet and are excited by each other lasts for approximately three months. So you want to use a dating rule that gets you past that initial chemical high. That chemical high is an elevation of dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. If you add phenylethylamine, the kiss chemical to the chemical high, you've gone from snorting cocaine to doing heroin. Are you in your right mind when you do heroin? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So don't add a chemical before you know who someone is that makes you think things that aren't true. In other words, that makes you think they are amazing when in fact you don't even know who they are. And here's the thing. I want to be with somebody who's going to be with me for the next 50 years. If they can't hang out with me for three months, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna believe you're the person who's gonna be loyal and devoted. I'm gonna believe that you're the person who's gonna stick by my side if I get in a car accident and I'm in a bed for four months. Uh-uh, I need, I need to know that you have consistency. I need to know that you have staying power. I need to know that you're around me because of who I am, not because of what you're getting. Where's the best place to meet single people? Online. Saying I love you after a week of dating as girlfriend, boyfriend, red flag. Yes, you don't even know each other yet. You don't even know each other. You should know each other at least six months um, before the I love yous because you know now you're past the honeymoon stage into the reality stage and you've known each other long enough in the reality stage to have a better idea of who this person is. Those first three months, you're on best behavior syndrome. What if after the no kissing for three months rule, the kiss is bad, chemistry is so important. My husband did not kiss me right the first time. It was like, blah, 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 right? That's, that's not my style. You know what I did? I said, let me kiss you. Let me show you how I like to be kissed. And I showed him how I like to be kissed. He is ever since then and now and forever, the best kisser I've ever had in my entire life. The best kisser. Do you know when's the last time I made out with my husband? Lunchtime. It was a couple hours ago. He is the best kisser I've ever had in my entire life. It was a five second lesson to teach him how to kiss me. Now, chemistry, that, that should be building during those three months. If the chemistry dies during the three months, this isn't the right person. If the chemistry is building during those three months, Fantastic. Teach them how you like to be kissed. All the hardware, everything. Listen, I don't know if you notice, but I look different from other women. 
Our bodies are different. Every time a man gets into a relationship with a woman, he has to learn how she likes to be managed. So teach him how you like to be touched. Teach him how you like to be kissed. This is a no brainer. Every single time somebody gets in a new relationship, they have to learn their new person. It's a no brainer. Be the teacher. Don't be afraid to be the teacher. And if you are afraid to be the teacher, that's on you. That's not a them problem. That's a you problem. That's an amazing way to see it. They have to show that they will stay. Absolutely. I Listen, if I just want to hook up, I'm just going to go hook up, right? Like you don't need to prove anything to me. Just that you're trustworthy and I'm attracted to you. That's it. But if I'm looking for a committed long-term partner, I want to see that you can commit and stick around. So you need to prove that to me. I need to see that before I choose you. I'm not going to play Russian roulette with my love life. I'm not going to play Russian roulette with my heart. You need to show me who you are before I choose you as a partner. I'm not getting into this to break up. I'm getting into this to stay. Show me you have staying power. Show me you have integrity. Show me you're loyal and devoted and are a, a responsible, hardworking person. Show me where your heart and your mind is. Show me your devotion. Show me your intentions. Show me we have the same goals and timelines and are headed in the same direction together. And then I'll kiss you if it aligns. Should I be worried to say I love you to my man of seven months knowing he may not say it back? Saying I love you is a gift. It's a gift. It's something you give without expectation of return. If you're not willing to gift him with the openness of how you feel about him, then don't do it. But if, if you know, listen, if saying I love you is too scary because you might not hear it back, then don't say it. Um, but just understand that your I love you was then going to be a manipulation rather than a gift. How do you resist texting your ex the and um, the ex guy you're talking to? The same way you you quit smoking cigarettes. Every time you feel an impulse, you go do something else instead. Also start meditating. That's going to reduce your anxiety. Also start reading No More Assholes. Get yourself planning your future instead of looking backwards. How do you break up with someone you still love? We don't work and change doesn't happen to fix it. So break up sandwich. This is why you're great. This is why it's not working out. This is why you'll be great for someone else. My boyfriend's family is telling him that I dress too provocative. How should he react? He shouldn't care. His reaction should be, I don't care. That's, his, that's what his reaction should be. I don't care. What's your opinion on dating multiple men during the three month period? You should be, you should be. This is about not wasting time, right? No kissing means no commitment. If I'm not committed to you, you have no expectation of loyalty. I'm not committed to you. I don't know you. I'm not committing to a stranger. That's the whole point of me using the no kissing for three months dating rule. I refuse to commit to a stranger. If I do the kiss to see where it goes, I'm committing to a stranger. I'm not going to do that. That's why I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule. Um, if somebody says, does that mean you'll be seeing other people? You say, I'm open to meeting people because I'm intent on finding the right one for me. But no kissing means no commitment. So I'm not committing to anybody I don't know. I'm scared of rejection. How do I change this? What book do you recommend? No More Assholes. I do help you understand rejection and how to deal with it in this book by increasing your courage and self-esteem and reducing your stress and fear. How often should you talk to someone you're seeing? As much as you like. Just use the no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex dating rule for three months and, and see them as much as you want to. 
But at the end of the day, if they're over at your house at two o'clock in the morning, you say, you have to go now and kick them out because no sleepovers for three months. You need time to think. You need time to go over your day to see if there's any red flags that pop back up because they were like overcome by the next moment and they were pushed to the back of your mind. You need time and space to think about how your day went with them. So physical intimacy is natural. So doesn't the no kiss rule stop that? No kissing does not mean no affection, but affection is something we give because the other person made us feel warm and fuzzy. So if you feel warm and fuzzy and affectionate towards that person, then you show affection. But no kissing is no lips coming together in a kiss. Now, the more affection you feel, the more affection you can show. I used to kiss my husband in this little tender spot right here beside his eye. It's such a sweet little, little, little soft spot. And he would like always close his eyes and go, mmm, while well, I would do that. He still does, by the way. I still give him those little kisses up here and he still closes his eyes and mmm, and enjoys it. Um, but the great thing about the no kissing rule is it really teaches you how to show appreciation with affection it really gets your imagination going you become more creative in how you will show your appreciation and affection for the person we have this brainwashing that's gone on and this is because kissing starts all intimacy right kiss on the first second or third date otherwise you miss the opportunity so people are fear they're fear kissing they're kissing because they're afraid of losing the opportunity. So take the fear out of the equation, show affection if affection becomes something that you feel towards that person, um, and, and you will develop actual intimacy before you get to a kiss, which means the the intimacy that you've created is genuine intimacy. All the thing that we're doing where intimacy starts with a kiss, well, a kiss is a chemical reaction. That's all it is. It doesn't mean you've actually developed intimacy because intimacy is something that happens when you know who the person is. So you're kissing a stranger, but you're feeling intimate about them, which means you're messing yourself up when it comes to choosing a partner because you're feeling intimate about people you don't know and you're hoping they turn out to have the character and consistency that you need in a partner. Were you ever insecure about cheating on your relationship? Uh, me cheating on my relationship? No. Was I insecure about my husband cheating? At times, yes. Um, but that's because his baby mama was very much in the picture. And not not necessarily him cheating, but him leaving me to go back with her. Um, because he is a very good man and wants to be a very good father. And there were some points where I was afraid he would go back to her to bring the family back together. Your skin is lovely. Do you take oils with foods? I do eat avocados. Hello, love. Um, I eat avocados, but I also use Cocoon Apothecary skincare. I've done a couple TikToks about them. If you want to go find them and go find her at, but it's it's at Cocoon Apothecary, and she makes incredible skincare. Where do you go in Canada to meet other singles? I always I always say online. Could you use one month instead of three? You're not gonna get enough information, my love, in one month. Like you're you're literally not gonna understand how consistent he is. Everybody, it's easy for everybody to be great for one month, but you will only get consistency, you will only understand consistency if you if you take enough time to see what changes after a month. So minimum three months before that first kiss to have a better understanding of who someone is. Advice for balancing a relationship and your last year of university. Um, get fixed that shit and have zero conflict in your relationship so you have more focus for school. I developed a superpower when I stopped fighting with my husband. It was incredible the amount of brain power I suddenly had because I wasn't spinning on issues anymore. 
Anytime I ask my boyfriend for help, he guilt trips me and huffs at me. Any tips on stopping this? Yeah, get yourself a man, not a guy. Get yourself a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. By the way, what's his love language? I wonder about that. I wonder if he's even showing you his love language. Let's fix that shit about. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Um, so fix that shit is a book that helps you remove all conflict from your relationship. I teach you how to manage your emotions, how to not vomit into your relationship, uh, how to manage your behaviors, how to understand your partner better, how to bring up stuff that you need to talk about without there being defensiveness, so conflict resolution. Um, and, and I really teach you how to reset your relationship if there's been a lot of uh, conflict up until now. Should I share my story of domestic violence with them? Not in the early stages. Like, you know, make sure that, first of all, your fundamental values align. Make sure they are in it for the three month no kissing rule. If they're still around after those conversations, then you get deeper into who you are and then you can share your story. But you don't need to go into great detail, just the broad outlines of the story. You're not looking toward this, to this person to be your therapist. You're, you're just, uh, you know, gaining insight into each other. If you do the three month rule, then date, do you wait six months before I love you or three? So, um, so th like three months of getting to know each other after those three months, another three months of like really stepping into a relationship and getting into the reality phase. So after six months total, you may feel like you know enough about this person that you are in love with them. What if you're seeing some people in a three month period, no kissing, and you like them both? What do you do? Do pros and cons. Do pros and cons about each person and choose the best person for yourself. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. My boyfriend hasn't said I love you after eight months, but we were arguing a lot. Could that be why? 100%. Uh, so are you with a generous long-term thinker or a selfish short-term thinker? If you don't know, grab no more assholes, grade their paper on the 12 character traits. If you are with a generous long-term thinker, grab fix that shit. Do what's in this book to remove the conflict from your relationship. When is the ideal time for a guy to ask me for an actual date after texting? When he wants to, but you shouldn't just be talking to one person, right? So get out there, talk to multiple people, um, and listen, if there's something you wanna do with this person, then propose it. You don't need to wait for them to propose it first. Within the three months, how many times would you meet? Like once a week, as much as you want. It's no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex. Talk to each other as much as you want. Meet up with each other as much as you want, but follow those guidelines. If you follow those guidelines, it won't be too much because you'll have enough time to yourself to think about them. Go back over the day, see if there's any red flags that popped up, but then were superseded by the next moment. Boyfriend is lovely, but persnickety. Things sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> I can't live up to standards, dump them, right? Like, like if, if it's so stressful to be in this relationship, and I remember sleeping with the enemy, you know, the towels needed to be perfectly aligned, right? The coffee mugs had to be perfectly turned. Uh, if, if it's so stressful to be in a relationship with somebody because of what they're vomiting into the relationship and they're not working on controlling that in any way, shape or form, leave the relationship. You don't come into a relationship to change people. You don't come into a relationship to be a therapist. If they refuse to not vomit their dysfunction on you, don't stay in this relationship. If you are suffering, don't stay in this relationship. What book would be great for a female just starting out at university, only having one boyfriend? If you're in a relationship, it would be fix that shit. If you're single, it would be no more assholes. 
Uh, he says his love. He says his love language is gifts, right? He says so. It doesn't sound like you're getting a lot of gifts. Uh, he says it's gifts, so <laughs> he wants you to give him gifts. Is that it? Um, he seems to just come to me when bored or wanting something. So dump the motherfucker. Not worth it. Not worth it. Uh, did your husband win you back by reaching out to you or did you reach out to him? He, he won me back by being persistent. He did reach out to me. Yeah. When do you think is a good timeline to move in together? Um, so, uh, three months, no kissing after that first kiss one full year of not living together of dating but not living together after that you can move in together so one year three months would be my timeline for moving in together which book of yours helps you avoid getting into another relation uh, situation ship that would be no more assholes no more assholes is all about not getting into a situation ship but instead getting into a committed long-term relationship with somebody who wants what you want and is compatible with you Oh, he's so nice. Give me a second. <clears throat> uh, I saw my new boyfriend on dating apps. So when I asked why, he said it's because I tell little lies all the time. Dump, 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 do day. Dump today, my love. You are setting yourself up for heartbreak if you stay with this. How long would you wait to introduce your kids to your new boyfriend? I, I, like before you kiss, my love. Before you kiss. Because here's what you're doing. When you choose somebody, then, you know, you choose them. You kiss them, like, okay, and then I wait, make sure we're, we're going okay. And then you bring this person and you go, hey, kids, I brought us a new family member. Deal with it. That's not fair to them. They haven't been part of this process. They have to accept somebody just because you accepted them. So before you kiss, use that no kissing for three months dating rule. Take a couple months to get to know them. If they get to two months, it's time to start making your people part of your vetting process. You spent two months doing that initial weeding. They seem good enough for now already. So use the next four weeks to get your people involved get your kids go for ice cream hey kids we're getting ice cream with ted hey kids we're gonna go for a walk with ted see how they interact if they're not getting along don't kiss this person bring this person around to your friends hey come to this barbecue that my friends are hosting or hey i'm having a barbecue with my friends you should come and and see how your friends interact because they will see red flags that you might not see so make your people a part of the vetting process and don't kiss somebody who isn't getting along with your people. Best age for marriage, anytime you're ready. My new boyfriend, my boyfriend has to be high in order to be nice, red flag, massive, he gets to go. What to say and not say on a dating profile be descriptive about who you are don't talk about who the other person has to be it's it's like attracts like so describe who you are and the person who feels like you're like them is the one who's going to be attracted to you <clears throat> i want no more assholes in an audiobook yes it's coming out in june how long yes coming out in june How to create a good profile on dating apps. Uh, I would suggest you get a coaching session so that I can help you write your bio. I do this all the time. Um, don't make that initial picture a sexy picture. Make the pictures you include in your bio, you doing things you want to do with a future partner. Oh, my TikTok notifications don't work. So I never know when you're going live, oh my love. Uh, this is sweet. What book to read? I'm engaged. I'm super happy, but looking to build us even more. That would be fix that shit, my love. Love that. After three months, every method for affection up for grabs? Yeah, 
Uh, so once you hit that three month mark and you get that first kiss, you seal the deal on that committed relationship. This is the beauty about the no kissing for three months dating rule too, you guys. You don't get eight months into something going, I don't know for a couple yet. Uh huh. No, 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 no. They went through three months of no kissing to become a couple. You seal the deal with that kiss on a committed long-term relationship. Game on. Whatever y'all want to do, it's on. I've I've had couples who, who go have their first kiss and then go to someone's house and like not leave for a week. So all good. All good. Book to read during engagement to strengthen relationship even more. Fix that shit, my love. Yes. If a guy tells you what he's not looking for in a partner, is that a red flag? Well, it kind of speaks to his past trauma, right? Um, so you want to look for somebody who's talking about what they want instead of vomiting negativity. How to focus on positive rather than negative in the other person and stop criticism. Um, so it's called choosing silence. Uh, so basically, uh, think about what you're going to say before you say it. If it's negative, don't say it. If it's a problem, but you're not the solution, don't say it. I don't want to leave this guy, but he keeps lying to me. He says I'm wrong for giving up four years. No, go, my love, go. That's, uh, that's quite mentally and emotionally abusive. Leave. Uh, and don't talk about your life as though you have no control. You have full control over your life. Don't let anyone convince you you don't. And don't let anyone convince you you need to settle for less than what you deserve. You deserve honesty and integrity. So he's using emotional manipulation. Say goodbye. Do you tell him about the no kiss rule? Absolutely. Uh, I wouldn't want him to think I don't like him romantically. Exactly. Um, so do grab no more assholes because it really gets into the science of it. Uh, this is a conversation you want to have before they move in for a kiss. There's, listen, when you're getting to know each other, when you're choosing your partner, you need to talk about your goals. You need to talk about your plans for achieving your goals. One of your goals is getting into a committed long-term relationship. Your plan for achieving that goal is using a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure you choose the right partner. So before they move in for a kiss, you need to have this conversation. I do give you the script in No More Assholes. I also teach you, um, I teach you how to navigate this. I teach you how to do this. It looks like it froze. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. My best life advice is to meditate. It, it changes your brain structure. Your brain is your perception space, right? Everything you think, everything you feel comes through your brain. So if you change your brain structure, you literally change your experience. So the best life advice is to start meditating so you change your experience. Samad, I love you. Have you been in many toxic relationships? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. And so I, I, I honestly, I know what it feels like. I, I know how I got into them. I know what it took to get out of them. I know how to avoid them. I know what it's like to be in a healthy relationship. This is part of my superpower is my experiences. I'm not just textbook teaching you guys. I'm actually teaching you guys. Sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology, behaviorism, spirituality. All started with philosophy. But I get to, to, to really understand all the nuances of the journey because I've traveled the journey. And like the difference between me and somebody like Matthew Hussey. Matthew Hussey is not in a relationship. Matthew Hussey has never had a long-term relationship. So he's going to teach you how to get to the top of Mount Everest with a map. He's going to say, hey, I have a map. Here's a piece of paper. Here's where the trail says to go. I'm going to teach you how to get to the top by showing you this piece of paper. I've been to the top of Mount Everest. 
I know the way up and down. So I'm going to show you the way up by leading the way, not just telling you this is the way you need to go. I'm going to show you the way I'm going to lead the way. Um, so the fact that I've had these experiences and gotten out of them and learn how to do better and understand the science behind everything I've achieved is what makes me good at what I do. I do on form today. Thank you, my love. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop up in the pop up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Look at all my ideas. Hello, my loves. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram too, because I give away a free one hour coaching session every month. And the next one is coming up soon. I feel like I'm getting advice from an older sister I never had. I'm so here for you. So here for you. I didn't think I could get out, but now that I did, I feel amazing. Yes, you're so welcome, my love. Red flags to look for in a guy's online dating profile, any form of disrespect whatsoever. Um, any form of disrespect. Uh, but that's pretty much all you can isolate in a profile. Sometimes even good men don't write a whole lot in their bios because they just don't know what to say about themselves. Mm -hmm. I got the book. Perfect play. Wish me luck on my date Saturday. Oh, good luck. Do let me know what you think of the book, please. Uh, if you if you read it and pop up on another one of my lives, please let me know what you think. Uh, is it normal to worry about what your partner's parents think of you? So it is, right? It's job interview. You want them to like you, but at the end of the day, at the day, they don't have to like you. What if a guy lists his makeup preferences in his dating profile? Is that toxic? It sounds like he he really wants his partner to fit into a very, you know, narrow box. Now, if he says, you know, I prefer women who don't wear a lot of makeup, that's okay. Um, if he gets like, you know, that that's normal, by the way. Most men like women who are light on the makeup, not heavy on the makeup. So it's perfectly okay, normal to say that. Um, but uh, if he's like super specific on the makeup, this sounds like a sleeping with the enemy kind of situation. Like <clears throat> you're going to have a lot of rules that you're going to need to conform to. <clears throat> Oh, what's the perfect playbook? So the perfect play is the last book that I just wrote. It's a book for men on how to date. Who wants to see the cover for the perfect play? This is the first time I wrote a book for men, by the way. Thoughts on getting married and having kids young. No thoughts about that. If it makes you happy, that's great. That's great. I would read Fix That Shit. Make sure you have a conflict-free relationship because your children will be watching and learning from you. So whatever you're modeling is what you will be teaching them. So be sure you are able to model a healthy relationship. Oh, my loves, you want to see this cover for the perfect play? How is dating different after 35? Um, the more you, you know, like, listen, some people get to 35 and they're more fucked up than they were at 20. Some people get to 35 and they're more, just, they're more settled into themselves. So it really depends person to person. Wally sugar, ha. Here it is. That's my relationship or my my dating book for my single men. What do you think a fulfilled life means? It means knowing what your purpose is. Like custom made teaches you to uh, uncover what your purpose is if you don't know it yet. Um, having a fulfilled life means knowing what your purpose is and plugging your energy into that. It's very emotionally rewarding to know what your talent is and be able to turn that into a job. It looks great. Thank you. 
how do I word what I want to say in a breakup? If you need a script, come get a coaching session. But the breakup sandwich is this is why you're great. This is why it's not working. This is why you'll be great for someone else. What's a diplomatic way to discuss a friend's toxic impact on your relationship? So, oh, on your relationship, their toxic impact. Um, like just, just quite honestly, right? Like calmly and honestly and firmly is the diplomatic way to do it. Um, I don't know what, what is happening in your situation. If you do want a script, come get a coaching session so I can give you your script for your situation. Patiently waiting for the book for men. Ooh, I have a date this evening. First time in three years. Awesome. Sama, good luck, lovely. Good luck. How long is your current relationship? 15 years. We, we've known each other for 17 years, um, but we've been together for 15 years and we, we fought for 10 years, but we haven't had a fight in five years, which is really nice. If you want to achieve that, by the way, uh, Fix That Shit helps you get to zero fighting in your relationship if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Oh, I just received the perfect play yesterday. Tell me what you think, love, when you read it. What is too big of an age gap for a relationship uh, between 15 and 20? So as long as the youngest person, like like when you're 25, um, you know, like stay, stay like, you know, five years, right? Um, the, the younger you are, the closer that age gap needs to be. But after 25, you can date somebody who's 85, doesn't matter. Your brain is fully formed. You are aware of the decisions that you're making. But uh, under 24 and 25, your brain is still forming. So it's not an even playing field if your brain is still forming, but you're dating somebody whose brain is fully formed. I can't seem to find a man I want to date. Uh, I would say define your next relationship uh, and get out there. Like define your next relationship and just get out there and start meeting people. But it's very important to define what it is that you want in a partner. If you need help with that, then do come get a coaching session. Is it weird to talk to my ex's best friend? He's the owner of a business I go to. No, it's fine. It is fine. 18 and 22, that's, that's close enough. If it was 22 and 17, I'd be like, mm. uh, but 18 and 22 is close enough. I've seen a 26 year old justify dating a 19 year old and then he abused her. Yeah, no, no, too big of an age gap for sure. 16 and 19 is a no, no. Um, n yeah, definitely a no, no. Yeah. 21 and 25. That's fine. Oh, damn. You're welcome. I was virtually groomed as a child, yeah. I forgot about it for a while, but it impacts me now. Yeah. Uh, my loves, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. And um, who wants a book walkthrough? If you want me to do a book walkthrough, a book walkthrough, do a, a little light description about each of my books, say book walkthrough. What are your thoughts on people having a type? I often don't match their type. Is this a red flag? Um, I think we all have something that we're attracted to. Like I'm a Robert Downey Jr. kind of girl uh, over the big muscly kind of guys. So, you know, we can all have our preferences. That's okay. 
How long do you meditate daily? Uh, between 10 and 20 minutes. Book walk through. We want some book walk throughs. Okay, we're gonna do a book walk through. Do you think it's good to have no fights? Many consider that normal for a healthy relationship. Exactly. The people who think fighting is normal are the people who fight regularly. When you have zero fights in your relationship, I guarantee you, by the way, the people who say fighting is normal have never gone a year without a fight in a relationship because if they did, they would understand how much better it is to not fight. So uh, here's what happens when you stop fighting. First of all, when you do fight, you retract your good feelings, which means, okay, you stop fighting, you make up, your good feelings come out. Then you fight, you retract them again. Then you make up, they come back. And then you fight, you retract them again. If you don't fight, then you wait for the next fight to happen. It doesn't happen. You feel emotionally safe, don't you? You feel a little bit safer because there isn't something making you feel defensive. So now your good feelings grow. And then the next fight doesn't happen. So now your good feelings grow some more because you feel safer still. So the more emotionally safe you feel, in other words, the less you defensively pull in your emotions, the more your emotions have a chance to grow. The opposite of retraction is growth. If you stop fighting, and I don't mean repression, by the way, I mean resolution. If you stop fighting, the love between you grows bigger. Book walk through. Okay, let's do this. Um, okay, Come Back Queen is a book that helps you get over a breakup. So if you're still hurting from your last relationship, even if it was years ago, this book is going to help you heal. No More Assholes is going to help you find your next partner. Make sure you choose a generous long-term thinker and not a selfish short-term thinker. After the First Kiss is going to help you solidify that relationship. Transition from courtship phase to reality phase with as little insecurity as possible. Fix That Shit is going to further ease your insecurities. It's going to help you unpack the emotional baggage that you're dragging around going to help you learn how to practice conflict resolution, how to understand your partner better, how to practice self-love so you have a healthy relationship. Uh, Custom Made is a book that helps you understand what your purpose is. If you're upset that your partner doesn't spend all their spare time with you, it's because you don't know what your purpose is and you're making your partner your purpose. So Custom Made is going to help you understand what your purpose is so you can start putting your attention into that and balancing your life in a healthy way. I also teach you how to monetize your purpose so that you start getting paid doing what you love. This book is a workbook which means after every chapter I'm going to have you doing some writing exercises because you're going to figure yourself out. Uh, Dating 101, how to understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. This is the textbook that I wrote to get into high schools for sex ed. So if you're curious, this is a really great book for you. Um, Fake Love Need Not Apply, how to avoid posers, losers, scammers, or predators. This is also a free ebook if you hit that free button in the link to my bio. Um, by the way, you're also going to see there's a free long distance guide for those of you who are in long distance relationships. Um, you can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. If you have Amazon where you are, you can get my books. So you can go find my books on Amazon. Uh, say Yes to Goodness. Um, this is how to have a happy life, understanding 10 areas of your life that affect you and how to navigate them with the right perspective and behaviors. Um, so, uh, by the way, I do have like, there's, there's, um, buttons to access my books on Amazon. You can start there and then use the information that you find, like take my name and then put it into your country's Amazon search engine to find my books uh, for you on Amazon. Which book is best, best to get my ex back? Believe it or not, No More Assholes. That's exactly how I got my husband back, is by doing what's in this book. When you say fight, does that include little bickering? Um, fight is fire meeting fire. So that's what a fight is. If it's fire meeting fire, that's a fight. So um, anything that makes you defensive and retract your feelings, that's a fight. If you guys are, are feeding into it. 
uh fighting resolution yes absolutely it's in fix that shit my love if you want to stop fighting and resolve your fights and get to resolution get to peace in your relationship you have to do what's in fix that shit this is 50 chapters that get you that each of these chapters is a tool that you use to create this extremely peaceful loving close cohesive intimate relationship with your partner <clears throat> my loves i'm gonna go for now i'm gonna head out um i'm gonna give you guys one more chance to set yourself up for a notification when i go live so if you want a notification when i go live click my picture up here once or twice you're gonna get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell if you click on that bell say i just did so i know who's joining us happy monday hello megzy hello lovely don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I'm doing a coaching giveaway uh, and next one is coming up soon. Somebody said, I'm amazed at how quickly and coherently you do this. This is my passion. This is my talent. I've literally been doing this for over 20 years, you guys. All I did was write books and present myself on a platform and go, hey, this is what I have for you. Do you want it? And you guys are like almost 600,000 followers later going, yeah, we do so that's amazing amazing i love being here for you i really do because it's this incredibly you know ever widening circle of people who are finding happiness in their relationships and that is so super rewarding um so i'm gonna head out we're gonna i'm gonna go have supper now i will see you soon i'm not gonna stay away for long because you know i never do Mwah, my loves i'll see you soon How do you deal with a bad breakup? You get a comeback queen, my love. This is a book that I wrote for you to help you heal your heart after a breakup. Oh. I like turtles. That was a commercial, wasn't it? You're the best. Thank you. Thank you, my love. I appreciate that. Uh, is it wrong to want to be considered when my partner wants to bring an ex into her life? Um, so here's the thing, right? Are you a peer or are you a parent? Are you confident or are you insecure? Did you choose a partner who's trustworthy or not trustworthy? It's Charlie. I could use advice on how to... Charlie's been chasing any more huskies and skateboards? No, but he chased a bunny today. Uh, big chase on a bunny. Do you think there's anything a couple can't come back from? If they want to. Why do you have my dog? <laughs> uh, it, listen, with enough effort, anything can be accomplished. Hello. How do you improve communication with a defensive man? Yes, and we all get defensive, right? So, and, and you want to combat defensiveness because when people are defensive, they don't hear a word you say. So you need to eliminate defensiveness when you want to address things with your partner in order to have them hear you and get their cooperation when you're talking about problems and solutions. So Fix That Shit is the book that will help you um, have your communication with your partner without there being defensiveness. You do need to do all the things that are in this book in order to create this environment where this healthy communication happens. But a lot of couples, myself included, by the way, I never ask you to do anything I haven't done myself. So my husband and I fought for 10 years, lots of defensiveness. We haven't had a single fight in five years. This is how you do it. What do you use for blush? It's tart. It's tart. I don't know the color, um, but it's tart. I love tart makeup, T-A-R-T-E. It is the absolute bomb. It is worth every penny. And I do their sales too. Like I really stock up when they have sales. My boyfriend is pretty dry with me, but outgoing with everybody else. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, it could mean that you guys do more communicating um, overall than he does with other people. So when he sees other people, he has more to say with them. It is better to be a peer than a parent. 
uh, tips for couples going through the deployment. Uh, if you guys are going to be doing a long distance relationship, uh, I do have a long distance relationship guide that's free for you to download in the link tree in my bio, Powder. Is it appropriate to hide messages from your ex, from your partner? If you have nothing to hide, why hide it, right? If you have the kind of partner who um, doesn't understand that you and your ex are simply platonic and don't have feelings for each other, if indeed that's the case, here's the thing, if there have been inappropriate messages between you and your ex, then of course your partner's gonna freak out. Um, so the question is, if you're hiding it, why are you hiding it? Tis on how to leave trauma bonds with narc abuse and three toddlers. Um, meditation, gotta start meditating, gotta make sure you don't fall into another relationship with the wrong person, use a no kissing for three months dating rule, elevate your self-esteem, elevate your confidence, make sure you don't fall for somebody like that again. Um, I highly recognize, uh, recognize, I, I highly uh, recommend you get No More Assholes and do all the exercises in that book to elevate yourself and work on yourself. Um, this is, you know, you're saying trauma bond. So uh, you're saying like a deep psychological, right? Then if that's the case, if you feel you are deeply psychologically affected and need help, then you should get help navigating that. Um, if you're not gonna work with me, if you're gonna get somebody to work with, if they're not proposing meditation by the second appointment, get somebody else get somebody who understands meditation and the effects on the brain because you need to learn how to reduce your own anxiety and meditation is the way you do it because you literally shrink the amygdala which is the part of your brain that produces stress fear and anxiety so if you go seek out professional help and within two sessions they're not getting you to start meditating i mean insisting you need to start meditating to accelerate your healing if they're not saying this they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I cannot stress this enough. A good therapist, a good psychologist, a good coach will get you doing what you need to do to heal. Not just come and talk, start doing things that will heal your brain and heal your body. If you've been traumatized by your past experiences, you have inflammation in your brain. You need to reduce that inflammation. You need to start moving, getting some exercise, get more oxygen into your system, a 10 minute walk a day, that's five minutes out, five minutes in. But the very least, sitting down with meditation music for minimum 10 minutes a day to calm your brain. Is just talking things out with your partner considered fighting? If you guys aren't raising your voices and getting agitated and heated with each other, um, that's not fighting. Fighting is fire, meaning fire. My boyfriend's mom has been so controlling and the house was so toxic, but finally my boyfriend can move in with me. Awesome. What do you think about one partner loving the other more? My husband would say he loves me more. Uh, that's okay. Like as long as you love each other, you know what I mean? My husband would say he loves me more. Does it mean he doesn't feel loved enough by me? No, it doesn't because I love him very much and love is a verb. We practice love with each other. We take care of each other. Thank you, you're welcome. I've been listening to your love frequency. It's actually helping, good my love. Yes, so for those of you who are wondering what that's about, I have a YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel, I have a Let's Meditate playlist. Track number two is a 10 minute love signal. It's a beautiful sound. Um, it's actually created by the same person who's making this track that you're hearing right now, which is a chakra balancing one. I'm always balancing your chakras when I come live with you guys, by the way. So the 10 minute love signal is a wonderful place to start with meditation music if you don't know where to start. It's very soothing, it's very calming, it's a beautiful frequency. 
you wear headphones because it's a binaural beat, which means it plays one frequency in one ear and one in the other ear, combining inside your head to create a third frequency. Um, so guys, if you want to start feeling more calm, go to my YouTube channel, go to my Let's Meditate playlist, go to track number two and listen to that every day with headphones. What do you do when he says talking does nothing? Come get a coaching session with me. I purchased Fix That Shit from your YouTube channel. Payment went through, but it didn't download. Well, that's strange because I don't sell Fix That Shit on my YouTube channel. Um, I wonder if you got it from my website. Um, so, uh, Carolyn, uh, let me see here. Let me see. Let me see if I see an order from you. Allison. Let's see. Susie, I don't see Car Carol. Carolyn. Carolina, what name did you buy it under, my love? Oh, here it is, May 30th, right, right, right. Um, so you would have received a link. You need to download it onto your device. You need to put the Kindle app on your device. You need to load it onto the Kindle app. You did get some instructions with your downloads. So do you want to double check the instructions that you got and follow those instructions to uh, get it onto whatever device you want to read it on, my love? I really enjoy your insights. Keep up the amazing work with helping others understand each other. Yes, I will. Yes. How can I find the audiobook? So uh, the audiobook is only through the link tree in my bio. I tried to download the audiobook for Fix That Shit. It only sent me to the book. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know my love. I like a lot of people are downloading the audiobook. So I don't know why you're getting redirected somewhere. Um, when you click the link to download the audiobook, do make sure that you're reading that page because that link is um like sometimes it gets messed up coming over from TikTok, so you have to take that link there that i show and put it onto a new browser window i don't do sign language sessions uh i don't do any sign language but i do a lot of this i do like some talking with my hands i don't you know i do stuff like that i'm very i'm very animated i'm a I'm a mover. I'm a mover. If it bothers you, but you like to hear what I say, maybe you can just close your eyes while I'm doing my lives. Hey, from New York. Love your content and advice. Thank you. My boyfriend would be just fine without me, which isn't a bad thing at all, but I would break down. What do I do? You're together. I don't know why you're worried about this, my love, but if you want help to stop worrying about things that you don't need to worry about, do come get a coaching session. Relationships do include compromise, yes. Do you have advice for not overthinking behaviors and accepting that your partner will have flaws? Uh, I would advise you get a coaching session um, so that I can understand what these flaws are that you were talking about. Maybe you do need to be thinking a lot about them instead of simply accepting them. Um, you can get fix that shit to work through your feelings, learn how to control, manage, and reduce negative feelings. How can I help my boyfriend get alcohol counseling? He wants to start but doesn't know where. Any pointers? Yeah, Google your city and Alcohol Anonymous and it's going to show you where you can start doing meetings from where you are. 
I've been in an eight year toxic relationship. I don't know how to move on. Come get coaching, my love. Come get coaching. If, if you just simply can't figure it out, then come get coaching. Ooh, just had a first date with a 12. Girl, you don't know Samar. You don't know if he's a 12 yet. You don't know. You know what he's told you about himself. You don't know the truth. You don't know. You, all you know is what he's told you. You don't know anything until there's enough reality for the words to match reality. But right now, you don't know. You haven't met his friends. You haven't been to his place. You don't know yet. Uh, I want to read it so bad. Maybe I can get a refund and get the paperback instead. Who do I email? Uh, Carolina. Um, so the the ebook you mean? Um, yeah, I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that. I need advice to see if my relationship can survive my partner's betrayals. Uh, okay, come get a coaching session, my love. Anybody who needs to get a coaching session to clarify what's happening in their relationship, to clarify, should I stay, should I go? How can I deal with what's going on? How can I calm my mind? How can I calm my emotions? Um, how can I resolve the conflict? So if you need to figure any of that stuff out, then what you can do is get a coaching session so that I can ask all the questions necessary to understand your situation enough to give you the tools that you need to navigate this. So if that's something you wanna do, go to my bio, click on the link tree, there's a coaching button there. Click on that button, it takes you to a page. Follow the instructions, make sure you read what's on that page and there's three steps for booking yourself in for a session. Make sure you follow all three steps to book yourself in. Oh, you've known him for one and a half years. Okay, okay, all right, that's good. That's good, Saman. If the guy keeps mentioning he is frugal, is that a bad thing? Is he paying for the date? You can be frugal, but still be generous. My husband isn't crazy with his money, um, but he's still a generous person. I don't know how to be fair when my boyfriend cheated online in the past. I always feel like I need more from him. I would suggest a coaching session if you're trying to work through this, my love. I just can't do coaching on a live. Should you tell a girl if a guy cheated with you, kissing and emotional, how would you navigate this? I would absolutely tell her because she needs to know she's with a cheater. Um, so I would, you can send her an email with screenshots, send her the receipts so that she knows what she's with. I received a link in my email, but not a link to use the book on Kindle eBooks. Um, so, uh, check your spam folder for the, um, check your spam folder for, uh, the, uh, the, the downloads, but I, I'm pretty sure on the page that has your receipt, you should have a, a hyperlink. You should have text in blue. So fix that shit should be in blue and it's, it's a clickable link and that's a download and it downloads to your device and then you upload it onto Kindle. How can I support his journey with going sober? Go to AA meetings yourself. AA meetings are also for uh, family members and spouses and partners. So you can go to AA meetings as well. Just you know, find out which ones are for you. Thoughts on my boyfriend being passive aggressive since I need to move for school. I don't have thoughts on that. Um, if you want me to help you navigate what you should do about it, I would need a lot more detail about who he is and how he behaves. And then I can help you understand what you should be doing about this. How do I get coaching? I'm a massive overthinker and it's all I can think about, yes. Uh, so go to my bio, click on my link tree. There is a coaching button there. Click on that button, it takes you to a page. Make sure you read what's on that page and follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. I make it really easy. Do you recommend blocking ex-boyfriend even if he's not texting and calling? I do. 
because if he randomly calls or texts while you've picked up your pieces, you've done your healing, you're getting on with your life, you're evolving, you're growing, you're feeling good, and then bam, a day is wrecked because out of the blue, for some reason, he reached out. So I do recommend blocking him to keep him from interrupting your growth and evolution. Yes, we can discuss at your next session, my love, for sure. Any tips on parents meeting before our marriage? These are grown adults. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, you know, just make sure you speak well about your partner, right? You want your parents to like your partner. This is why you should never run to your parents with issues in your relationship. Um, you know, like, like, in, in our culture, don't go to your parents with issues in your relationship. If you're in an arranged marriage, parents actually do act like marriage counselors because they understand the process of learning to fall in love with somebody. But uh, in our culture, don't run to your parents because you will forgive your partner, but they won't forgive as quickly. I feel like a lot of my past relationships are affecting me negatively, especially work performance. This is why I propose using a no kissing for three months dating rule so that you don't get into a relationship with someone you don't know only to get caught up in a relationship that just drains you because there's so much conflict and bullshit going on. Um, and the fantastic thing about uh, using this no kissing for three months dating role and getting into a relationship with somebody who's not problematic, using fix that shit to have a conflict free relationship is that you have a superpower. You are in a loving supportive relationship that takes up zero of your brain power. All of your brain gets to focus on being productive and doing what you enjoy doing instead of spinning endlessly on issues in your relationship. I do have an uh, uh, I do have an audiobook. It's fix that shit. You will find it in the link tree in my bio. I visited my ex yesterday and it went well. He asked for my number but hasn't reached out yet. What do you think? I think you should stop looking backwards. I think you should get no more assholes and really understand what it is that you need in a relationship instead of you know, continuously pining for the person who no longer wants to be in a relationship with you. Manibu, I don't know if he broke up with you or if you broke up with him. I don't know the situation, but uh, based on this little amount of information, when you are not in a relationship with somebody, move forward. Stop being stuck in the past. What if my boyfriend is scared about me going to college in person because I might meet other guys? If he is controlling in any way, shape, or form, if he tries to hold you back in any way, shape, or form, dump the motherfucker. Do not be in a relationship with somebody who is so insecure they want to squash you down and reduce you for their own pleasure, for their own well-being. That is toxic and that is wrong. So he can he can say i'm afraid you're going to meet somebody and and that's fine he can say that but if he repeats that if he harps on that if he's passive aggressive if he's a jerk about it dump him if he tries to guilt trip you dump him do not be in a relationship with somebody who tries to make you small so they can feel better off topic but your eyeshadow is amazing Thank you, lovely. If you have no proof, you have nothing to say, Jess. Um, if you have no proof, there's nothing to say, unfortunately. Uh, you can only talk about cheating with proof, not without proof. Um, you can send an email and say, uh, you know, look, I know this might be shocking to you. I wish I had some proof to back this up. 
I don't, so buyer beware. I just wanna let you know, I did this and this with your boyfriend on this date at this time in this city. She can match that date time with them not being together because if he was with you, he certainly wasn't with her. So you can text her that information or email that information to her um, and just, you know, let her let her ride with that as she would. If you feel selfish for going to college, you are definitely with the wrong person. Definitely. He should be proud of you. Look at you go girl. Look at how amazing you are. That is how you should be feeling. Like, wow, I have such a great boyfriend. He's so supportive. You feeling guilty for leaving? He is the opposite of supportive. No, I wouldn't date you because you're not my husband. Tips for a relationship that's become long distance. I have a long distance relationship guide that's free for you in the link to my bio. Go ahead and download that. What's your advice on managing social media and post of exes? Don't go to your partner and say, by the way, go delete every picture you have of your ex, every post of your ex, because basically what you're saying is I want you to go spend some time thinking about your ex. And that's the last thing you want them to do, right? To go down memory lane and reminisce about those things. You also don't want them to resent you for the time it takes for them to do the tedious work of having to comb through their phone, comb through their social media, and delete anything that had their ex in it just to please you. Don't be that person who needs to control your partner's life, your partner's time. If you can't be in the moment with them, if you don't have a partner who's in the moment with you, then there's some dysfunction going on here. Um, but don't demand that they go think about their ex and go waste time deleting pictures just to make you happy because you're feeling insecure. If you haven't chosen somebody who's trustworthy and devoted, that's the problem. Not whether or not they still have pictures of their ex on their Instagram platform. Dating is frustrating. I've been accused of being gay because I won't kiss or sleep with guys right away. And that's the key word here. You said guys. So stop going on dates with guys, right? Stop going on dates with guys. Start making sure that you're going on dates with men, with generous long-term thinkers. Get no more assholes if you need to. But, uh, you know, a guy who's going to be that disrespectful on a date probably shows some signs of disrespect before the date. Should I better myself before getting into a new relationship? To some extent, absolutely. You should increase your confidence. You should increase your self-esteem. You should meditate and calm your emotions. Absolutely. This is, this is definitely things that you should be doing all the time. Um, so get no more assholes. Do that work. It's in there. How to deal with a controlling, protective man? Uh, he is a great provider and attentive, but I'm independent. So you use the word but, right? Which means you're not okay with him being a provider and attentive verse like like this isn't enough to make up for the fact that he is controlling don't say controlling and protective it's controlling and insecure right because if he was a secure confident man he wouldn't feel the need to try and box you up and, and control you so he is insecure don't be with an insecure controlling person it's not healthy for you you can find somebody who's a great provider and attentive who is not insecure and controlling. So let him know that. He needs to change his behavior, control his behavior, stop trying to control you, do what he needs to do to increase his confidence and trust in you. Because as long as he's not trusting you, he's not seeing you, and that's massive disrespect. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't recognize me. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who looks at my devotion and says, I don't see your devotion. I don't want to be with somebody who doesn't respect me enough to believe my integrity. I don't want that. So if there isn't freedom in your relationship, you are in a dysfunctional relationship and either you need to become the functional person and give freedom 
or you need to leave the partner who is dysfunctional and trying to control you and get in a relationship where there is freedom. My husband is asking me to divorce after 10 years. I told him to try again, but he doesn't want to. If he doesn't want to, then let him go. We did three months no kiss and now we are seven months together and super happy. My love, I'm so happy for you. That's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing this. I love that. Do you believe in right person, wrong time? That happens. Everything is possible. If they cheated multiple times online in the past, can they become a generous long-term thinker? You're asking the wrong question. You're asking the wrong question. The right question is, why do you want to stay in a relationship with somebody who shows you a pattern of being a cheater? What should I look for in messaging before going on a date? Uh, curiosity and respect. Curiosity and respect. Not being disrespectful, not asking for pictures, um, not seeing things that seem off color. Do any of your books talk about codependency? So the combination that helps you overcome codependency is fix that shit and custom made. So this book teaches you how to relationship. This book gives you a focus outside of your relationship, which is your purpose and your passion so that you're not making your partner your purpose and your passion. Your purpose and passion is your cake. Your partner is the cherry, the icing on your cake. They are not your whole cake. They are not your whole life. So learn how to relationship, learn how to be more independent, learn how to control your thoughts, feelings, emotions, behaviors, uh, learn how to uh, manage your self love and increase it and focus on yourself and learn how to take that and put it towards your purpose and your passion, which is something outside your relationship. My insecurities are so bad. Any tips? Yes, I have a No More Insecurities program in the link tree in my bio. If you want to undo bad insecurities, we need to deprogram you. I don't have a tip that's going to help you. This is a process. You need to work through the process to gain the outcome. So if you want to change, come take part in the process. But I don't have a magic wand tip that's going to help you overcome bad insecurities. We need to change how you think in order to change how you feel, in order to change the behaviors you feel compelled to do. Not a magic wand, my love, but it is a process. It's easier than you think it is if you do the work I give you. What does it mean when the person you're dating says he likes you, but he's emotionally slow? slow? Use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Say, great, that's no problem. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. Let's take it slow. Let's let the emotions build. Oh no, we have to be kissing and having sex. Ah, uh, I see. So you're not actually intending to get into a relationship with me. You just want to kiss and have sex and and hold off the relationship part until what <laughs> what so find out if that's a manipulation or if that's the truth use the no kissing for three months dating rule hello licky dogs I asked my boyfriend to text me a smile as I was having a bad day. He texted, I'm at work because he was at work. He was at work and your boyfriend is not your therapist. Uh, when you're having a bad day, the question isn't how is my boyfriend going to fix me? The question is how am I going to fix me so that you become empowered to deal with your bad days. Um, so what happened was you became emotionally dependent on your boyfriend for your well-being. You expected him to fix your well-being 
An expectation is a story you create inside your head that disappoints you when it doesn't come true. So you created an expectation. He didn't come through for you in the behavior you were demanding. You became disappointed in him. Now he's your lightning rod for your bad day, which means you're still not taking responsibility for your own emotions. That's a cycle that needs to stop. When you are having a bad day, you need to ask yourself, what can I do to help myself through this? Instead of saying, how am I gonna get somebody else to help me through this? Because that's disempowered. Empowerment is I know how to adjust my emotions. I know how to adjust my mindset. I know how to change the dialogue inside my head. I know how to deal with what happens in my life, right? This is empowerment. So what are you going to do to feel better? Do some meditation, do some journaling, take a bubble bath, do some self-love, have a good meal. You can get yourself to a good place. You don't have to blame your boyfriend for you not feeling better. And that's just it. I just wanted, right? Having a bad day and asking for a text and he said he's at work. I just wanted one sentence. Yes, but you made your well-being dependent on him, right? If you you if you'd asked for that and released the outcome and not been offended at his response because you had an expectation that he should do what you tell him to do, if you if you sent that out and you were fine with whatever came back even if nothing came back, then that's good. That's healthy but you you demanded he do something for you you set your well-being up on whether or not he would do it and when he didn't pull through you went oh here's another thing to my bad day and now your boyfriend is the enemy because he was at work so this is this is a you problem my love this is not your boyfriend's problem this is you your first response should have been how am i going to get my boyfriend to fix me your first response needs to be i am responsible for my feelings what will i do to help myself through this moment this is you being your own solution you need to start learning how to be your own solution What does it mean if that he's emotionally slow? Come get a coaching session if you want me to understand your situation and give you insight and tips on how to navigate it. I just can't do a deep dive over a live because I gotta answer as many questions as I can to help as many people as I can. But if you have a particular situation that you want me to help you through, come get a coaching session if you wanna do that. There is a, a button in the link tree in my bio, a coaching button, it takes you to a page. You gotta follow all three steps to book yourself in for a session. I'm always asking my boyfriend to hang out and it bothers me, should this bother me or are my insecurities showing? So, I mean, here's something you can do. Start planning your life as though he doesn't exist. Um, be reciprocal, be responsive, but what happens if you stop reaching out and planning something and you just start planning your life as though he's not in it? Like, I got some free time. Who am I going to see in my friends? What am I going to do with my friends? And and see what happens. So there's that, right? If you think he's he just kind of doesn't really seem to care enough, or your strength maybe like maybe he thinks she needs to tell me when she's available because i don't know maybe you need to give him like days and times if you want to do something with me on these days and times these are the ones i have available um but you might want to kind of schedule in some us time before i schedule something with someone else and let him know you know these are the best times for me to hang out with you let me know ahead of time if you want to i'm not going to wait for you to fill that time though i'm not just going to leave it empty just in case you want to if you're not letting me know ahead of time that you want to see me during those times i'm not guaranteeing those times will be available if you want to see me last minute
I am emotionally dependent on him and my family. Which book of yours uh, can I read to, to be better with that? So that would be Fix That Shit, my love. Fix That Shit really teaches you how to manage your own emotions. Thank you for your words. You're welcome. Any tips or suggestions on modern day dating? Modern day dating is now smart dating. It's not dumb dating. So dumb dating is kiss to see where it goes. That's kissing someone you don't know and then hoping they're the partner that you're looking for. Modern day dating is seeing where it goes and kissing the right one. Uh, so that's using a no kissing for three months dating rule. So if you just want to hook up, by the way, just hook up because your only criteria is um, do I find them attractive and do I trust them? If you want a long-term committed relationship, are you looking for a future husband? Are you looking for a future baby daddy? Are you going to be making major financial decisions with this person, like buying a house? What are the characters and traits and qualities that you need in this partner, like financial responsibility and hard work and dedication and loyalty and integrity, right? Like it's a long list, thoughtfulness, kindness, generosity, a lot of things you need in a committed partner. So using a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure you choose that person before getting in a relationship is the modern day dating. So No More Assholes is the book that's going to teach you how to date in a better way than the old style of dating, which is like, oh, I hope you're the right one. Oh shit, gotta break up again. Okay, next. All right, I hope you're the right one. Oh shit, looks like I gotta break up again. Okay, next. Oh, I hope it's gonna be the right one this time. Oh fuck, another loser. Looks like I gotta break up again. So we don't do that anymore. That's that's not modern. That's that's like that's. <sighs> Yes, I my first job interview this afternoon. Could have answered the questions better, but I did my best. Good, hope you meditated before. My ex blames me for everything when they're the ones that cheated. Why are you still talking to them? Block them. Hubby makes the income, wife handles 90% of everything kid related. How does the housework get shared? So wife does 90% of the household burden and pays 10% of the financial burden. Um, is, is that how you guys are splitting? Or if your man is paying 100% of the financial burden, then the wife does 100% of the physical burden. Parenting is 100-100. But, you know, listen, when somebody is paying 100% of the financial burden, if there are no children, she does 100% of the physical burden, the housework. If they have kids and he's still paying 100% of the financial burden, that financial burden went up. Kids are expensive. She is still responsible for 100% of the physical burden. Uh, but parenting is always 100-100. When dad gets home, he becomes a parent. There is there's no time off from parenting for either of them, right? Like it's 100, 100. You don't ask your husband to babysit your child while you go and take a refreshing walk or a bubble bath to relax. It's, hey, I'm gonna go take a bubble bath and it's, you know, dad knows, like I'm in charge. It's, it's I, I hate this idea that um, people have to ask the other parent to babysit the child. I need to ask my husband to watch the kids. That is not 100-100 parenting. It shouldn't be, I need to ask my husband to watch the kids. They're his children. He's a parent. As you tell your partner, I'm going to go do this, and the kids are going to stay with you. Okay. Boyfriend said he thinks he's more attractive than I am. Am I wrong to be upset that he admitted it? Is it true? Do you think so? Or, or do you, do, you know? I don't care. Like, honestly, like, it doesn't matter. If my husband said I'm more attractive than you, I'd be like, okay. Because it doesn't matter, right? So this, you're talking about ego. If you're bothered that your boyfriend said that, that's your ego that's bothered by that. Um, 
that is it's pure ego my love Oh, I just ordered fix session in custom made. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, my love. You're so, so welcome. I appreciate this. I, I know I come hard at people. I know I come hard at people. So so this is the lovely young lady earlier who was upset because she had a bad day and texted her boyfriend saying she wanted a smile and he said, I'm at work. Um, uh, so I appreciate that you were taking this to heart and you are saying, okay, I do need to become responsible for my emotions and I do need to become more independent. So I appreciate you. Thank you for that. Are you associated with a religion? No, I'm not. Thoughts on relationships that started from hookup. As long as it's healthy, there's no problem. Can best friends start dating? Sure. I think I'm in a really healthy relationship with a long-term thinker. What book is for me? I would say fix that shit just to really understand how to relationship properly and make sure you have really good conflict resolution tools if you don't have them already. Uh, so kind to teach us. Thanks a million. You're so welcome. So, so welcome. Why do I feel like I'm always missing out on events with people that I'm not even close to? I don't know, my love. You are my guru. Thank you. Can you be friends after a breakup if you are platonic? If you don't have residual feelings for each other, if there isn't one person who wants to get back into a relationship? We got Mr. Charlie being a snuggle puss. I bought Fix That Shit, it's fantastic, I loved it. Thank you, I appreciate that. My heart to yours, my love. What do you think about dating apps in your 50s? Any suggestions? I would hit up Bumble. I would do Bumble. Uh, I worked with a woman who was in her 60s, got onto the dating apps, got into a relationship, used that no kissing for three months dating rule, met a wonderful man, super, super sweet, such a good, super sweet man. Everything she wanted. My husband went behind my back about something after informing him not to do the thing multiple times. Sounds like, sounds like you should maybe get a coaching session, my love. Oh, your scenes is so good. I love this. I'm not used to being in a relationship where nothing is wrong. I've been meditating to help this. Yes, your mantra also is, yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Um, do we have newbies here tonight? Where are my newbies at? Say, I'm a newbie. I'm a newbie. Do you recommend these books to someone who left a narcissist and is now attempting to date again? 100%, my love. Uh, get into No More Assholes. Use all the techniques in that book. Hello, newbie. I'm a newbie. Look at the newbies coming out of the woodworks. Hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. Oh, newbies. Hello, Kay. Hello, Jane. Cassandra. Seven up. Love it, Kale. Love it, love it, love it. My newbies, hello, it's Tristan. My newbies, do you guys want a notification when I go live? All of you who want a notification when I go live, say, I do. Oh, he's so snuggly. I love how he cuddles. Oh, big sigh. Hello, my Charlie, big sigh. Such a happy boy. Oh, they cut his eyelashes. His eyelashes were so long. 
Best advice for a long-term relationship, I have a guide for you. It's free. You can download it. It's in the link tree in my bio, so go ahead and find that. Uh, those of you who, who want a notification, is it, look at my Charlie. Look at his little feet. He's got his little feet up against me. So for those of you who want a notification when I go live, um, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say, I just did. My little doggy. If my boyfriend calls another girl cute or hot on TV or in person, I don't know where, don't be so insecure that you can't understand that there are attractive people out in the world. Um, is he disrespectful about it? Is that something he constantly does? Don't be with somebody who tries to make you feel small. Jenny Chin Chin just followed the host. I love it. Love it. Just click the bell. Love it. Okay, welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's okay to notice that other people are attractive. Um, but if your partner is constantly pointing out other attractive people, to me, that's just not attractive in a partner. Um, you know, it's, it's fine. I notice it too. Yay, Grammy. Such a sweet, sweet puppy. Should I always allow my boyfriend to hang out with his cousin most of the day when he lives with me? So allow my boyfriend, um, right? Allow him. Why are you having a parent-child relationship? Don't have a parent-child relationship. So Come Back Queen is the book that helps you get over a breakup. Hello, newbie. My boyfriend kissed his ex over a year ago at the beginning of our relationship. Should I ignore it? How has he been for the past year? What is more important? Um, so the beginning of your relationship, were you two like official? Um, how has he been in the past year? Has he been a cheater? You know, what's the behavior? Two lies, three lies today. I did three lives. My husband for the second time has been saying I'm worthless. I asked him not to say it, but he still said it. So here's the question. Why are you in a relationship with somebody who calls you names? Why are you in a relationship with somebody who's verbally abusive? You need to take a stand. You need to set a boundary. Don't ask him not to say it you're going to let him know i will not be in a relationship with somebody who calls me names i will not be in a relationship with somebody who puts me down i will not be in a relationship with somebody who's verbally emotionally mentally abusive if you insist on doing these behaviors i will leave this relationship you don't ask people to treat you well. I, I, when I'm watching TikTok and I see somebody being polite with somebody who's being aggressive, I see somebody saying, can you please step back? Can you please leave me alone? To a Karen who is being aggressive, I want to scream. Because you don't say, can you please? You don't say, can you please? You don't ask. You tell people what they need to do around you. If somebody comes close to me, I put my hand out, out, full out, point my finger, that is the length you need to be from me. And if you are not, you are getting pushed back and then the finger. That's the entire length you need to be from me. And if you are within that length, I will push you back and I will say, you need to get away from me. You have to go now. If there was a Karen getting in my face, I would say, you have to go now. And I would say it louder and louder and louder, no matter what they're saying. Because I'm not going to be polite about the fact that you are being impolite with me. You never need to be polite with people who are disrespecting you. I want you all to understand this. 
Uh, so for those of you who want a session, go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's a coaching button. It takes you to a page. There are options for sessions. Take a look at what I have. See if anything is a fit for you. I'm a Scorpio. You're welcome, Jenna. In a long distance during lockdown and the dynamic has changed, should I be concerned? You can get my long distance relationship guide and start using the advice that's in there. Oh, I just want to point out you are spectacular. I'm so thankful I just stumbled across you. I'm happy you're here. I am very happy you're here. I'm here for the growth, my loves. Scorpio insight. Ooh. <laughs> Don't mess with the Scorpio. How do you reconnect from a short break? And do you still do the no kissing for three months? Um, if you took a break because things need to change, don't take them back unless the change is evident. So if you need to use the no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure the change is evident. Uh, Addie Rose, if you need to get a coaching session to understand what's happening in your relationship, um, do come get a coaching session so that, uh, we can help you gain some clarity. I needed to hear that. Yes, I'm here for you. for you lovely guys don't forget to follow me on instagram because i do a one hour coaching giveaway every month and the next one is coming on soon hello lovely i love that you are strong and sweet and firm <laughs> yeah it's a pretty good description strong and sweet and firm mm -hmm. which one of your books should i read first well i have a which book is right for me quiz in the link tree in my bio so click that quiz. It's 20 seconds, yes or, or 20, 20 questions, yes or no. You'll get through it really fast. And then it lists all my books in the order you want to read them in. And it even shows you a little percentage bar beside each book to show you how badly you want to read it. You guys are going to love that quiz. It's so super cute. I don't have kids. I have two step kids. I have two fur babies, two dogs, uh, Maggie and Charlie, my standard poodle and my little Westie Poo. Love your page, queen. I take a lot of your pointers from my relationship. Yes, my love. Good, good, good. I love it. Can't wait for our coaching session tomorrow. Allison, yes. Allison signed up for the No More Insecurity course. Oh, no, sorry. It was just the one session. Yes, yes, yes. Allison, I love it. I can't wait. Have pen and paper handy. Do record the session if you want. So voice record it or screen record it, whatever you want. Um, but and you will find it very helpful to record your session, but also have pen and paper because you will be taking some notes. Hello, Charlie. You're so cute. You're so cute. Are you my good boy? Lots of lovey doveys. He's, he's going to get too warm. He's going to hop down soon. You're welcome, Allison. Besides the love frequency meditation, what others would you recommend? Uh, the chakra balancing I find is really super nice. Anything by Rich Pendlebury is amazing. And he's done tracks as like medication for you. So do you need to reset because you had a really particularly hard day? We got a repair and reset. Um, do you need to balance yourself? We got the chakra balancing. Do you need to help yourself fall asleep? We got one of those. Do you need to just relax your mind? We got the relaxation ones. So I got you covered, you guys. There's even an immune one. Um, I think the immune boosting one you're going to find on my podcast. Guys, I do have links to my podcast in the link tree in my bio. Also links to my YouTube channel. Ah, <clears throat> oh, love your content. I learn I learn a lot from them and you have the loveliest smile. Thank you. What are some ways you can regain trust in the relationship after cheating has happened? You need to renegotiate the relationship. If my partner cheated on me 
and I was going to take them back, I am renegotiating the relationship. Number one, I want spyware on your phone linked up to my phone. So if I want to know who you're talking to and what you're saying, I can take a look without asking your permission. If you don't like that, guess what? We're not getting back together because my imagination is going to go crazy because of your behavior. Now, I could have chosen to not get back with you, but you're insisting you've changed. You're insisting we can make this work. Fine. Do your half of the work. Do what you need to do so that my imagination doesn't go crazy on me. If you're unwilling to do that, I'm not stepping forward and overcoming my feelings just to appease you and make you happy. Uh -uh. <laughs> Thank you for doing three lives today on my date day. You're so welcome, Saman. I'm working on self-love and raising my vibe, but still some days are so hard. Yeah, that's that's life. I've been working on this for over five years now and still some days are hard. And that's because you are in a human body and this human body is like waves on a beach. Sometimes it comes on really nice, sometimes it recedes and you gotta put yourself back together again. Mental health is something that you work on all the time. Mental health is a daily thing. Every single day, do your exercise, eat healthy food, meditate, take your vitamin D, take your 5-HTP when you need it. At least one of those things a day, but every single day, do something. And on those days that are harder, do more of those things. But mental health is always something you need to address. Always, 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 always know that. Go with the flow. Be able to ride the waves of your life. Um, Bruce Lee was amazing. So poetic. But, you know, he said be water, right? Like be able to flow around everything. Because like, you know, sometimes water, it's flowing around rocks, right? These hard things. Sometimes those rocks are jagged flow around it. It's okay. These are all moments and moments will pass. Best place to meet men, go online. Uh, I don't like, I record my sessions when I'm doing them but then I delete the recordings because the only reason why I record them is if something extraordinary happens and I need to cover my ass. Um, so I, I, I record it just in case something like really, uh, you know, terrible happens during a session. But if nothing unusual happens, if it's just a regular session, I delete all the recordings um so and i don't send my clients recordings if you want a recording of our session you are responsible for recording it yourself how does a man get out of a relationship with an abusive woman the same way a woman gets out of a relationship with an abusive man you save your money you get a place you move out that's that's what you do you go you you find a couch to go sleep on whatever you need to do you do it you just, you do it. You don't make excuses. You get it done and you do it. Currently reading Comeback Queen, wanting to read Fix That Shit. Love it. Love it. Love the growth. How do those separate meditations help with different things? Is it the frequencies used? Yes, it is. Yeah. Hey, girl. Glad you had the confidence to come back on live looking like that. Proud of you. Woohoo. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always have the confidence. Always have the confidence. How do you record them? Uh, on Zoom, it, it records it on Zoom and then it'll download it to your computer. If you do Zoom, you can always choose the option to record your, your Zoom call. Where do I find the quiz for which book of yours to read? can find it on your site. Go to my bio on TikTok here, click on the link tree, and you're going to see there's a button that says which book is right for me quiz. <coughs> 
yeah it's on my tiktok um link tree or my instagram link tree in the bio my boyfriend is compromising lots to be with me and he says it's okay but i'm worried it will lead to resentment it will only lead to resentment if you don't appreciate him if you're worried instead of grateful then he will resent you if you are grateful and appreciative he will be happy he did this for you some of your recommendations are for people who suffer from anxiety have you experienced anxiety yes um I've, I've been so depressed, I wanted to take myself off. I've been so anxious, literally, the, the, the vision in my mind, like literally guys, I saw this in my head, was me taking my fingers like this, like this, digging them into my chest, ripping my skin open because I couldn't stand to be inside my own body. Um, I am a strong, stoic person. There have been a couple times when I was in the depths of this depression and anxiety. There was a couple, like literally two. But there was a couple times where I called my husband crying because I just couldn't stand to be with myself. And uh, and he said, you know, do you want me to come home? And I said, yes. And he came home and he held me and I cried and then he went back to work. But yeah, I have had, I've dealt with really massive anxiety and depression you've helped me control my thoughts because i have anxiety sometimes oh my love thank you for sharing that honestly you guys this makes my day it really does i have a question for when you're already in a relationship and past the kissing and sleeping together okay What meditation sounds do you use? Uh, exactly what you're listening to right now. I love the Chakra Balancing by Rich Pendlebury. I have a hard time making time to read. Any tips? Yeah, just grab any of my books and stick it by the toilet. And every time you sit down to poop, read a chapter. My chapters are really short. How do you know when it's the right time to move in with your partner? Uh, you, you don't fight you don't fight you guys get along you 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 come to understandings very easily it's been over a year since you got together i have fixed that shit but is there an audiobook yes fix that shit is an audiobook you will find it only in the link tree in my bio i was happy to see you mentioned jordan peterson on one of your videos i listened to most of his stuff i'm the jordan peterson of dating I'm controversial when it comes to dating. So glad you stuck around here helping many people. Yes. Thank you also. Yes. Um, oh, look at this. My boyfriend says he noticed a big difference in me since I started meditating and reading Fix That Shit. Yes, good. I love it. Have you noticed a difference in him? How has his behavior changed? Jews. How has his behavior changed? Totally you are, thank you. Rose, if you need a session, my love, come get one. I just can't do a session over a live. Jules 216. Two lives in one day. I did three. I did three. You guys are gonna see like three lives up on YouTube with me wearing the same top. Oh well. Uh he's a lot more attentive and affectionate physically and verbally. I love this. You are with a generous launcher thinker who loves you. You've become the emotional leader. It's created goodness in your relationship. I love this. I'm so happy for you, my love. So, so happy for you. That's amazing. I love, 
Guys, if you are in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, this is the book, capital T, capital B. Fix that shit. Fix that shit. It works wonders in your relationship. If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, a lot of people getting freebies. By the way, you can get a free book of Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. You can also get a free long distance guide. Um, you can get that through the link to my bio as well. It's, it's the button under the free book button. Addie, what was the name that you used for your session? What was your name, my love? How could I evaluate if I get back to my ex-husband or not? How could I evaluate if I can get back with my ex-husband or not? Is he asking you to get back? I would do a session. Uh, you Or you can get no more assholes. There are 12 character traits your partner should have. Evaluate him based on those 12 character traits. How do you keep yourself accountable on your to-do list? Um, so I don't have, like, sometimes I do a to-do list. It's kind of, it's actually been a while since I wrote up a to-do list, but literally I will, like, if I feel I want to get myself on track and get organized, I will write out basically goals, the things that I want to accomplish, and then just make sure that I'm, you know, ticking off that list. But I have no problem working hard because I love what I do. So it, it, I, this, I, don't, I don't need to work that hard to keep myself accountable because I'm just passionate about achieving stuff. Lots of people get in freebies. I love it. Love it. How much are your books? Uh, fix that shit. Depends where you buy them. Depends what platform you get it on. Uh, right? It's honestly like sometimes Amazon.ca, it's on sale, but not on Amazon.com. So just go shop around, go check it out and uh, go find where you want to get it, what format you want to get it in. If you want paperback or ebook or audiobook, if you want the audiobook, you can only get that through the link tree in my bio. Went to a family party with my man. He left me alone throughout the party. I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I don't know why you didn't go to a party to go socialize with the people who were there that you don't normally see instead of wanting your man to be stuck by your side. Um, instead of resenting him for socializing with the people that he doesn't normally see. A quick explanation of a short-term selfish thinker versus a long-term generous thinker. So a long-term generous thinker says, I want to be in a long-term relationship with somebody and look after them. Be a contributing partner. I want to take care of this person, right? Love is a verb, love is service to the other person. So that's a long-term generous thinker, somebody who sees love as a verb and wants to apply that to somebody for a long time. A selfish short-term thinker says, I don't want to look after anybody but myself and I'm not ready for a relationship. He also says he's a lot less tense now. So this is Jules again, who has read Fix That Shit and um, she, uh, uh, she's she been applying what's in Fix That Shit and her boyfriend says she's much better and he's more affectionate both physically and verbally. And he also says he's a lot less tense now. Now the reason why he's less tense is because there is now consistent behavior coming from you. You are consistently doing things that are functional and now his brain is relaxing because he's starting to get used to this as a new normal instead of being tense and wondering where the next fight is going to come from. Good for you, my love. I'm so proud of you for creating such goodness in your relationship. You are amazing. Uh, Adeline Bell. Adeline. Let me take a look at this here, Adeline. What was what was the assessment when we talked? What was the assessment? Adeline, he's a three. You didn't dump him yet? What the hell, girl? You're not even listening to me. You're not even listening to me. You're coming here asking all these questions and you're not listening to the advice I give you. 
He's a three. Why are you with a three, my love? No, 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 no. No, 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 my love. No. No, my love. What's going on? Why are you asking me these questions? You, No more. No more. No more. If you're not going to follow my advice, stop asking for more. It's not okay. Thank you so much. You've been a big help to my relationship. Yes, you're so welcome, my love. Adeline, dump the motherfucker. My guy got a four and I dumped him the day after our session, Samad. Yes, and you just went out on a date with a 12. Uh, you dumped him, but why are you asking these questions, love? Can men have female friends with no alternative motive? Yes, it is possible. It is possible. <laughs> trying to figure out which book to send a friend who started dating two months ago uh they both seem good people okay um so fix that shit right if they are in a relationship with somebody that and it seems to be working i would say fix that shit so that um you know they can they can really understand how to resolve conflict and have a peaceful uh cooperative relationship together How do you know what number they rank? So in No More Assholes, there are 12 character traits. So when I do a session with somebody and I'm assessing the person that they're with, we go through the 12 character traits. It helps me very quickly understand who they're with. Um, and, and by being honest, like the thing is with me, they're more likely to be honest about uh, the grade that they're gonna give that person that we're, we're not sugarcoating anything in my sessions. I don't know if you realize, but I do come a little bit hard and fast. So um, so we use the 12 character traits. We go through each one. We give them uh, either an X or a check mark or a 0. 0.5. Somebody, you know, sometimes somebody is uh, kind of sort of in the middle. So we'll, we'll give them half a point if that's warranted. Um, and then we find out what their score is out of 12. And if they're not at least a nine out of 12, he gots to go. He gots to go. How do I get over heartbreak? I messed up and lost him. Um, I love Greg, come back queen. This is the book that helps you get through a breakup. How do you avoid leading a male friend on? The friendship is new. Don't look too cute when you're around them. Uh, if, you, if it looks like you fixed yourself up to be around them, they start to think you're trying to look cute for them. Um, so, you know, be messy, right? um right unless you're unless you're going somewhere and you want to look cute for where you're going but don't make it a point to be cute with them don't touch them because they will translate physical touch even if it's playful into flirtatious touch so don't be physical with them <laughs> How do you find the ranking system? It's in No More Assholes. It's the 12 character traits. You need to go through each trait and give them either a score and like a check mark or an X or a half point um, for each one. I just tried to get the long distance guide and put in my email address email address and it wouldn't let you take it okay i don't know why that why that glitched for you love you are strict to the point and people need that strict and to the point and people need that i'm glad you guys still love me despite despite that i am that way i'm glad you guys still love me i'm glad i'm glad it helps you right i just i don't want to waste any time i don't want to waste any time this is free right this here is free so you know do what you will with what i say here um i do appreciate that people do gain something from what i do when i come here so that's great but i've always been very direct and to the point and very concise in my language uh 
I got divorced four years ago. I haven't had a real relationship since. Am I broken from that? No, my love, you're not. No, you're not Victoria. How do I know if my boyfriend is losing feelings? Uh, hard to say, right? I don't know how long you've been together for. I don't know what the behavior is. Um, if you want to increase good feelings in your relationship, make sure there's no conflict. You can do what's and fix that shit. Uh, you can start using those consistent loving behaviors um, and see what that does in your relationship. Boyfriend compliments other females in front of me, but barely compliments me. Should that be red flag? If your man is complimenting other women more than you, dump the motherfucker. Dump him. Dump him. My husband rarely compliments my looks. He doesn't need to, by the way. But, you know, every now and then he goes, looking good, baby, right? Every now and then, once in a blue moon, he goes, looking good, baby. He doesn't need to compliment me more than that because I got me, right? I don't need his compliments to feel good about myself. But every now and then he says, looking good, baby. But he, as little as he compliments me, he compliments other women even less. Your man should never be complimenting other women more than you. If you're with somebody who does that, dump the motherfucker. Does he compliment other women? So we, <laughs> if like we might see like somebody like boobaged and he might go boobies. And, and the fact is I might do that too, by the way. Um, uh, but uh, he, like he'll never, you know, see like he'll never say she's attractive. He never says that. He would never say something about another woman that he doesn't say to me, for one thing. Um, he's, he's never just out of the blue just said she's attractive. I, I don't ever remember hearing him say that. But the rule of thumb is your man should never compliment other women more than they compliment you. Points out the obvious. Yeah, my husband like might point out the obvious that's it. Yeah, it's, it's disrespectful. If they do that, it is downright disrespectful. And I would not be in a relationship with somebody who does that. How do you deal with polyamory? I have no issues with polyamory. Whatever consenting adults do that make them happy, I have no problem with whatsoever. Our coaching sessions on FaceTime, they are on Zoom, so Zoom video. Uh, yeah, so wherever you are in the world, you can get a coaching session. If you want to get a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button, it takes you to a page. Make sure you read what's on that page and follow the instructions for booking yourself in. My man is a nine or 10 out of 12. See, Allison, that's good. That's good, my love. Tips on dating a narcissist? Don't. If you think the person is a narcissist, get rid of them. Period. So a man can't compliment another woman. You can compliment them all you want. If you're single, if you're in a relationship and you're going to compliment other women more than your woman, you're not the guy for me. Not the guy for me. Because you seem more caught up and more attracted to and more willing to notice and more willing to verbalize how you think other women are attractive. Not the guy for me. So you can do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. But if you're the kind of guy who's gonna compliment other women more than me, you're not the guy for me.
I need one. Amen, sister. Tis on getting someone to communicate better. You need to create emotional security in your relationship. You can't insist that somebody talk more when you're creating a an environment that isn't emotionally safe. So fix that shit does help you create emotional security in your relationship. Uh, you will get more in terms of communication, more emotionality from your partner if you create emotional security. So uh, fix that shit is the process for creating emotional security. I'm not okay with my boyfriend going to coffee or going out with female friends. Is this okay? So what's happening here? Are you insecure or did you choose a partner who is not trustworthy? Which one is it? Do I need to be concerned that my boyfriend says love isn't going to get me anywhere? He can think what he wants. Um, you know, my husband certainly has some pessimistic thoughts as well, but does he love you? Does he show you he loves you? Is he actively loving you? Is he a good partner? Um, is he a generous long-term thinker? Does he take good care of you? My man can think and say whatever he wants, but is he good to me? That's what matters more than anything. How do I compliment without coming out as forced? Um, looking good, baby, right? Like that's, that's what my husband does, looking good, baby. Um, that's, that's good enough, that's a compliment. You can compliment character, you can compliment um, what's good about your partner. Baby, I love how well you take care of me. Baby, you're such a good man. Um, baby, you're so good to me. Baby, I love how hardworking you are. Baby, I'm so proud of you, right? Those are all compliments. He's a spender, I'm not. I'm not looking to get married, so should I continue to live separately? If you're not financially compatible, if you don't think you can meld households together because you would need to babysit how he manages his money, then keep living separately. I see your point, thank you, Mr. Cooks. Thoughts on long-term relationships, they sound amazing. I like them. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say thank you. Who wants a notification when I go live? What if I compliment my partner but he doesn't accept it or think it's true? This is what you say to him. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to like it. If he rejects your compliment, simply say, you don't have to like it. Or you don't have to believe it. That's it. That's all you need to say. List off more compliments to tell men. You're so big. <laughs> when my husband puts his work boots on, he gets that extra inch and I go, oh, baby, you're so big. Um, I, I, I will say to my husband, you're so hot, you're so sexy. I say, baby, you're the best husband in the world. Baby, you're the best husband in the world. Baby, did you know how much I love you? Have I told you lately how much I love you? I say to him, baby, you're my favorite human in the world. Can I cancel my appointment, Vanessa? Yes, absolutely, I'll do that for you right now. When did you book it in? There it is. All done.
Oh la la. Ooh, I love going viral. Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa, is your session um, purchased, by the way? Don't forget to make sure that your session is purchased before you book it in. I don't, I don't do sessions that aren't pre-purchased. This is how I manage to stay in a good mood because I never have to chase anybody down for payment. Uh, I'm a coach and an author. I am a coach and an author. He said he wants to get to know me more before titles and three days later had me meet his daughter. Okay, but no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex for three months. How do I move forward with a person in the talking stage that is distant? So talking should mean talking, right? Talking, not kissing and sex, that's not talking. Um, so, um, you know, it's just be yourself, right? Just be yourself and you can talk to other people. Talking doesn't mean commitment. You shouldn't be committed to someone you don't know. You shouldn't be committed to someone who isn't in a relationship with you yet which means you shouldn't have blinders on to somebody who has not committed to you. Do titles matter? Yeah, they do. I know he's not dating anyone and neither am I. Um, so all that means is that, um, like it, it, here's the thing, a like if you're just fooling around, you're just fooling around. Ultimately, there's an exit coming, right? If you're in a relationship, it's because you are committing to building a life together. Are you committed to building a life together or are you just fooling around? That's where the titles come in. If you're a boyfriend and girlfriend, it means you've committed to building a life together versus just fooling around versus just friends with benefits. So right now you are friends with benefits. That's where you're at. You're friends with benefits. Do you want to be in a relationship? Do you want to be building a life together? then you need to settle that matter and have that conversation. Are we together or are we not? Are we friends with benefits or are we building something together here? I'm 42, he's 56, thoughts on age gap? Sounds fantastic to me. If you're at least 25, your partner can be 85, 95, 105, doesn't matter. Your brain has been fully formed by the time you're 25. So whoever you're dating above you, above that age, you are on a level playing field because you are fully formed brains coming together for a relationship. If your brain is not fully formed, if you're below 24 and somebody is in their 30s dating you, they're taking advantage of you. They are, they're, it's it's not okay because you're not on the same playing field. So, uh, Miss Parks, um, I do repost my lives on my YouTube channel. So, um, if you wait a few days, uh, just you know, take a screenshot, look for the the thumbnail where I look like this, and you can go rewatch. I can't get over my ex now it's eight months later how do i get over them so come back queen is the book that is going to help you with that this is the book that helps you um get over your last relationship helps you heal the heartache from your last breakup i worked that day uh, wait until I get my new schedule. Yes, no problem, lovely. Fix that shit in your lives. Help my communication skills so much. My boyfriend appreciates when I'm straightforward. Love this. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for sharing that. You're so welcome, my loves. I can't believe it's 11 o'clock already. Man, time flies. We must be having fun. We must be having fun. 
Oh, Mr. Stunglepush. He's such a good boy. He's he's as good as boy. He's getting better with car rides. Um, he used to just cry and cry and cry because he would get separation anxiety the moment it looked like I would be getting out of the car. Um, he's getting so much better with car rides now. 26 and 23. So, um, you know, you're, you're close in age. You're within five years. So you are close in age. So that's okay. My dad tells me my relationships won't last because of how old I am. Is that fair to say? No, it's not. No, it's not. Here's what I want you to say to him. I want you to go, Dad, where's your crystal ball? Where's your crystal ball? Because there are so many people who get into relationships in their 70s, in their 70s. I've met them. People in their 60s, I've helped them. So, Dad, where's your crystal ball? What does it mean when your brain isn't fully formed? It literally means that. Your brain is still forming up until the age of about 25. Are all the comments going to be on the YouTube channel too? No, the comments don't show up. Uh, so, um, when you download the videos from TikTok after you're live, it doesn't show the comments. It just shows the video. Any dating 101? You got it. Custom made. What is custom made about? Custom made is the book that is going to help you understand what your purpose and passion is if you don't know what it is yet. That's the first half. And then the second half teaches you how to monetize it. So you can literally start getting paid doing what you love. I'm 50, he just turned 32. What are the chances it works out? Depends on who you are, depends on who he is. It's 7 p.m. where you're at. Is he a Maltese cross? He's a Westie Poo. So West, Westie and Poodle. I met his mom, I met his mama. I met him when he was a baby. I picked him. I picked him. He's my baby <laughs> with his cute ears. His ears are the cutest, you guys. Like when he runs, they like flap. He's so adorable. Sometimes one bends over backwards. I have to keep readjusting and flopping his ear over. Uh, what do I do if my partner doesn't take initiative to plan dates? He doesn't. He doesn't want to take the time. So. Um, is that your strength, right? So in every relationship, we come into it as puzzle pieces. Your strengths fit into his weaknesses. His strengths fit in and fill your weaknesses. So don't get into a relationship and demand a partner turn a weakness into a strength. Appreciate the strengths they bring to the relationship. What are you getting from him? that he gives you willingly and lovingly because it is his strength to do so. Be grateful for that instead of resentful where he is not strong. If planning a date is a strong suit for you, it's something you can do, then do it instead of resenting him for not being strong in this department and show gratitude for like, maybe you plan a date, but he pays for the date. Thank you, baby, I appreciate that. You're such a good man. You know, I'll say to my husband, baby, let's, 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 let's do all you can eat sushi and he'll pay for it. He'll pay for it. Um, sometimes I pay for it and he lets me. Sometimes I go to pay for it and he doesn't let me. But most of the time he pays for it because he just feels more comfortable that way doing that. Um, and I don't resent him for not saying, do you want to go for all you can eat sushi? Sometimes he does say that, but I don't resent him for not thinking, let's plan a theater night. Let's plan a dinner and a movie night and makes the reservation and buys the movie tickets. I don't resent him for not doing that because that's not his strength. He's focused on building a business, um, growing a business, being successful at his business, all the little things that need to be done with his business around the house. So I, I don't resent his weaknesses because he brings so many other strengths to the relationship. I willingly and lovingly make those plans because I'm better able to do that.
where do I buy your book fix that shit? I need a physical copy. Yes, my love. Go to Amazon. Uh, your country's Amazon page, or if you're if you're an Amazon.com shopper, go to my link tree, click on the bio. There's a link there. It says, you know, buy, get my books on Amazon. Click that, and it'll take you to the Amazon page. You can find fix that shit. What do you think about women helping pay for the engagement ring? So there's a thousand dollars of my money on this ring. Uh, it was a six thousand dollar ring. My husband's budget was five thousand dollars. I didn't ask him for that extra thousand dollars. I put in the extra thousand dollars to get the ring I wanted. Uh, so it's totally fine. Uh, what about audiobooks? So fix that shit is now an audiobook. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio though. What are your opinions on moving in before marriage? I like test driving. Um, so I I am okay. I'm 100% okay. In fact, I advise you live together before you get married so that you understand how you cohabitate. How you Because there's a difference between resolving conflict when you're not living together and resolving conflict when you are living together. If you can live together and resolve conflict well, and have a good understanding of who's responsible for what and don't have fights about who's responsible for what because each of you are doing your part, then go for it, get married because you can do this. You can do the living together part. I think I need a one-on-one -on -one with you. My whole life is falling apart right now. I'm a life coach, my love. I am a life coach. I niche in dating and relationships, but I am a life coach, which means I can help you in so many different ways, lovely. At my age, I don't see a good reason to marry again. Fair enough, you don't have to. Just make sure you get into a relationship with somebody who has the same mindset. Um, by the way, when my husband and I first got together, I didn't want to get married again. I was fresh out of a divorce. My husband had been divorced for about five years. He didn't want to get married again either. So both of us were, were on the same page when we got together. I did start to change my mind in our relationship. I started yearning to get married, but I was like, I'm not going to say anything about this because that's not what I came into this agreement or uh, into this relationship agreeing to. So I never said anything to my husband like I would want to get married, but we broke up one last time and I said, I'm getting over this relationship. I'm defining my next relationship. Um, and when I redefine my next relationship, one of the things that I thought about is how have I changed? What do I want now that I didn't want before? And what popped up was marriage. So I put that down in my new definition. And when my husband wanted me back, I said, no, I'm sorry, but I don't want to get back with you because I've changed and I've changed what I want to get with now. I've changed what my next relationship is going to look like. And part of that evolution is marriage. I want to get married. You don't want to get married. So he did some thinking and he came back and he was like, I want to get married. Uh, so here we are. We got married. Thanks for sharing. Maybe a stage I'm at post-divorce. It could be, right? Um, it could be. It could well be. One thing that you can do is sign a prenup. Make sure your finances are protected if you do get married. Nothing wrong with that at all. Anybody who is offended at a prenup, um, say, you know, look, I'm just, I don't want to take anything away from you. And I'm sure you wouldn't want anything taken away from you. So, um, you know, we don't have to get married or we can get married, but have a prenup. Like it's, it's, those are the options that I'm comfortable with. How do you meet a worthy guy? No, you meet a worthy man. It's not about meeting worthy guys. It's about meeting worthy men. You get no more assholes, my love. You follow the advice, the directions, the instructions in this manual on how to date effectively and efficiently without wasting any time. And make sure you get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. No more short-term thinkers. What are some ways to make the relationship new and exciting? Uh, with the pandemic of being limited, make out with your partner. I love my man. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> seriously, like, like, seriously, near daily basis, the man, like, uh, 
right and does this to me like I go into the shop today he was doing some welding so he had like the the welding thing um he comes in he sees me he flips it up and he's wearing he's wearing like welding sunglasses under the welding visor so he flips it up and then he leans up against the counter and he angles down his sunglasses and he looks at me and I'm like baby stop it <laughs> he knows when I say that it's like stop being so sexy um you know so like make out with your partner twice a day get that juju back into your relationship there are chemicals released in a kiss that you don't want to release when you don't know somebody yet because it puts you out of your mind but once you get into that relationship like use a no kissing for three months dating rule to find the right partner and when you have found that partner make out every single day two kisses minimum five seconds each every single day and get that mm, into your relationship because the chemicals are an aphrodisiac an amphetamine an antidepressant those kisses make you feel so good about each other I asked uh, what brought him to the dating app. He said a friend put him on. Is that a red flag? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It could be a friend who's tired of seeing him be single and be the third wheel. Who's like, God damn it. Listen, you got to get yourself a relationship now. Like, we're tired of this. We're tired of this. We're tired of you being single. We're tired of you not having a relationship. <laughs> we're putting you on. It could be that. Not necessarily a red flag. He never wants to kiss, even though it's so important to me, just as he doesn't like it. Dump the motherfucker. Best thing I ever did for myself was stop getting into relationships with people who didn't want to be affectionate with me. Dump the motherfucker. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to kiss you, doesn't want to share affection, doesn't want to share daily intimacy with you. That sucks. Sucks. You don't like kissing? Then you need to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't like kissing. But do you know who does like kissing? I do. So I need to be in a relationship with somebody who likes kissing. I was so rejected in my past relationships because I kept picking partners who didn't share affection the way I shared affection. I would kiss them and it was too much. It was, I wanted too much, too many kisses for too long. This one, my husband, I could go right now and say, baby, I'm, I have, I, I, what did I say to him today? I said, I said, baby, I have a problem. And he goes, what? I said, I have a deficit of kisses today. And he made out with me immediately, right? Immediately. That's the kind of partner you need is, is the kind of partner who matches your level of desire for physical affection, who reciprocates it lovingly and gladly that is the best thing you will get for yourself that and get yourself a generous long-term thinker who loves you but some if your level of physical affection should be matched in a relationship don't get into relationships with people who don't match your physical affection whether it's low and non-existent and non-desired or high and very desired match that in a partner or you will make yourself miserable because you will put up with daily rejections. Uh, how long are each of your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions? They are one hour. Uh, same libido, age is a factor in our case. So uh, the, the bedroom stuff, I don't answer on lives. Unfortunately, I only do those on one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions just because, you know, you get the the creeper pervs and I just don't want to deal with those. Has he ever got welder flash burn eyes wet the bags I weld also? Uh, no, he doesn't have the bags or watery eyes or flash burns. He doesn't have that. He's very careful at work, very careful to make sure he doesn't injure himself. Um, my loves, I see there's a bunch of you guys in here now. So who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. I go live every day, but I'm loosey-goosey on the times. Sometimes I go earlier. Sometimes I go later. Sometimes I go once a day. Sometimes today I went three times. Uh, so if you want a notification when I go live, because this is what I do on lives. I do Q&As the whole time. Look at all the I do's. Hello, my loves. Hello, hello. Okay, my lovelies. 
Uh, click my picture here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on that bell. When you do that, say I just did. My boyfriend said I wasn't working out and then backtracked when I agreed and said, let's talk about it. Oh, it wasn't working. Okay. Um, might want to read fix that shit while you're waiting to talk about it or while you're talking about it. Um, if it's, if it's not working out, uh, I don't know if it's because, you know, one or both of you are selfish short-term thinkers, but if you're both generous long-term thinkers, maybe it's because you just don't know how to relationship. Look at all my just did's. Hello, my loves. Welcome. Welcome to the tribe. Welcome to the tribe. Uh, if you're trying to make a relationship work and you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, fix that shit is really going to help you out. Uh, so how much is a session depends on what you choose. So if you want to get a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree. The second button is the coaching button. Click on that. It takes you to a page. Make sure you read what's on that page. Follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. Uh, do I do premarital coaching or coaching for couples in general? I do. I do one-on-ones. I work with people who are in relationships all the time. I work with couples as well. So um, let's say you guys were to get a package, then we would do a session together. We would do some sessions separately and then we would do a session together. How do you feel about taking breaks? There's no, like, like you can work on your relationship, right? Without breaking up. A break is a break up. Nobody has the right to say to you, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. So if they, if they say, I need a break, say, what does that mean? Does that mean we are not together? Does that mean we contact each other or not? How long is this supposed to last for? If they say, I don't know, say, I need you to understand a break is a break up. That means we are not together. So if I were to meet somebody, we are not together. I am single. You can do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Make that clear. If they're unclear on what a break is, you clarify it. A break is a break up. You don't get to put me in limbo. You don't get to say, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. How do you give yourself closure after a breakup? Uh, you say, I don't want to be with anybody who doesn't want to be with me. Uh, grab comeback queen, grab no more assholes. This combination will help you move forward after a breakup. Justine, thank you for following the host. How, can, how do you tell if you're with a generous long-term thinker versus a selfish short-term thinker? So there are 12 character traits that help you understand that. You will find them in no more assholes. Grade their paper on the 12 character traits. They need to be at least a nine out of 12. How do you stop unnecessary arguments with a significant other? You get fix that shit. Do everything that's in that book. You have to do what is in that book to put a stop to unnecessary fights in your relationship. Can you list a few red flags that are often missed or unnoticed? When people don't use a no kissing for three months dating rule, what they are missing potentially is that the person they are dating, the person they're kissing, the person they are now in a relationship with that they don't know yet is somebody who lacks impulse control, somebody who lacks patience, somebody who lacks integrity, somebody who's flirting with other girls on the side. You don't know this yet because you haven't observed them long enough. Should I hold on to a long distance relationship even though I have no idea when we'll meet again? I would say no. If there's no plan for reunification, then no. As a woman is dating a younger man advised, uh, it all depends on the person, my love. All depends on the human being. Would you recommend a couple of coaching session for couples who just moved in together? I would, I would. Um, yeah, 
that would be a really efficient way of creating a lot of understanding and getting the tools necessary to resolve any conflict very quickly in your relationship. Knowledge is power, my friend. Knowledge is power, Carly, my love. Carly Wilson. Carly Wilson. Why does that remind me of that band that were one of the daughters? She was like a daughter of the Beach Boys. Wilson, Wilson, Carly Wilson. Is it me or does that sound like somebody who's in like a famous 80s, 90s? Who knows what I'm talking about right now? Guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, by the way, because that next coaching giveaway is coming up soon. Every month I do a one hour coaching session. Daughter of Beach Boys, Wilson. Wilson Phillips, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Haley. Somebody always knows what I'm talking about, even when I don't. Um, singers, Wilson and Phillips, yes. What does it mean when my fiance and I broke up but still sleeping next to me? I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know without understanding what's happening, doing a deeper dive. If you want me to uh, dive deep into this, you would need to get a session so that I can better understand the situation and the behaviors and um, give you an understanding of what's going on. But I can't help you understand if I don't understand and I don't understand if I don't get a lot of details. Um, so if you wanted me to um, help you with this, then you would need to get a coaching session so I can um, help you unpack this and maybe give you some tools for navigating it, whichever direction you need to go in. Uh, he points out negative physical attributes in me and then says he's just joking. It's very hurtful. So draw the line. Say, this is not a joke. If, if it hurts my feelings, it's not funny. If you insist on hurting my feelings, I will leave this relationship because I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who is a jerk and thinks it's funny. What does it mean if a guy is emotionally weak? It means he doesn't understand how to manage his own emotions. What if you feel like you're missing out while being in a long-term relationship when you're young? Then it sounds like you should not be in that relationship if you think you need to be somewhere else and you're having a fear of missing out. If you need to go spread your wings and go explore more, then go do that. Like if, if that's what you need to do, go do it. Don't stay in a relationship and resent your partner because of your decisions. Is it good to step back in a relationship and rebuild the friendship? It's good to step back and focus on your self-love. Focus on your evolution. Focus on your growth. Focus on your peace of mind. Focus on your mental well-being. If you need to step back and do that, then do that. Because that's what's going to make a relationship better, is you bringing a better you to the relationship, not you trying to find different methods of trying to get along better with your partner. Do get fix that shit, by the way, if you're trying to fix a relationship that is not working out so well right now. Thank you for what you do, you're so welcome. Why do guys or girls cheat? There's a lot of different reasons for that um from you know somebody is really messed up and using other people's attention like somebody would use alcohol or drugs or somebody is very selfish and simply uses people um and and doesn't care who they hurt along the way i want what i want when i want it and it doesn't matter how other people feel about it uh, how can we get a coaching session? Go to my bio, click on the link tree. There's a coaching button. Click on that. It takes you to a page. Follow the instructions on the page to book yourself in. I make it really easy. I make it so easy. 
As a side note, I loved your No More Insecurities course. I use your techniques every day. Carly, my love, my love. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I just did a session today. Uh, was Not today, but I did a session recently with somebody who's read Fix That Shit, taken my No More Insecurity course, and is now getting more targeted help uh, to navigate what she needs to do in her relationship. So awesome. I love that you guys keep coming back. I love that you're using what you learn from me and it's helping you. It's aiding your evolution. That's what I'm here for, the growth and evolution. Keep spreading the word. Keep teaching people what you learn, right? Like the stuff that you learn that make your life better. And I know every single one of you is doing this. And, and I just want to acknowledge and appreciate you for being my side teachers, my side kicks. The people who are helping me with my vision and my dream which is making this world a better place because collectively we better understand how to choose the right partner and be the right partner and make magic happen in our relationships because what we learn becomes the next generation's lesson so i love you and i appreciate you for learning from me and applying this you guys how can you work on insecurities within yourself while in a relationship? So this is why I have the No More Insecurity program. If you want to change this, come take this program with me um, because I teach you how to change how you think, how you feel, and the behaviors you feel compelled to do. If you don't want to take that, you can grab Fix That Shit and do what is in that book. This will be helpful too. Um, the beauty of the No More Insecurity course is I get deeper into the topic of insecurity and jealousy and I, I really teach you how to navigate your, your triggers that are happening in your life, in your relationship. Oh, if a guy's emotionally slow, I don't know what that is. That sounds like a line to me, to be honest. I, it, it does. So use the no kissing for three months dating role. I don't care what he means by that. I really don't. Um, you don't kiss somebody who isn't committed to you. Don't kiss him until he's ready to commit to a relationship. If he says, I need kissing and sex to know if I want to commit to a relationship, say, well, here's the thing. I'm not going to commit to somebody who's not committed to me and I commit with my kiss. So I'm not going to kiss you unless we are getting in a relationship and starting to build a life together. If that's not what you're ready for, then I'm not ready to kiss you. So I don't care what he means by that. You set the standard. You set the pace. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with me, period. Uh, should a partner be open about their sexuality before committing to somebody? 100% yes. If you were asexual, if you were super sexual, if you were bisexual, have that conversation before you kiss. It's not fair to get into a relationship and go, by the way, deal with it. Not okay. You should have every conversation before getting into a relationship. I miss him. How do I stop? You can start doing meditation. You can grab Come Back Queen. You can grab No More Assholes. Start doing some reading. Start doing some work on yourself. Start looking towards the future with optimism. Instead of looking backwards, start using the advice in this book to get over your last relationship. How do, I, how do I get my boyfriend to be more considerate of my feelings or knowing if he truly cares? That would require a coaching session, my love. I need a lot more information in order to give you the advice that you need because that advice depends on the behaviors that are going on. Guys, I did two hours. I did two hours. Uh, I need to go, my loves. Who wants a book walkthrough? Bef Oof. Let me grab this. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Who wants me to do a book walkthrough before I go? Who wants me to do? Um, tell you a little bit about each of my books. Who wants a book walkthrough? Yes, I shared how great it was with my friends and all have since booked a course with you. That's so amazing, my love. Thank you. I love this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, lovely. 
Hello, hello Catherine. I'm good, my love. So super good. So anybody who missed my answer to their question, um, take a screenshot so you see how I look. Look for that particular video to come up on my YouTube channel on my uh, live stream playlist. Me, look at all the memes. Yes, I love this. So many people want to book walk through. Let's do it. Somebody said do it. David, straight to the point. Do it. Yes, let's do it. Let's do the book walk through. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm doing this, if there's anybody who wants a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on that bell. When you do that, say, I just did. So, Come Back Queen is the book that helps you get over a breakup. This is the one that's going to help you put your heart back together after the last relationship so you can get ready and go out and find your next partner, which you will find with No More Assholes. This is the book that is the vetting process. This is the one that helps you make sure you get with a generous long-term thinker. No more selfish short-term thinkers. I teach you how to date like no one is teaching you how to date right now. This is the evolution of dating, you guys. No more kissing to see where it goes. In other words, kissing frogs only for them to stay frogs. Now you're going to look at people and choose the best one. So see where it goes and choose the best one. Anybody who doesn't care to get to know you before kissing doesn't care about you. They care more about themselves than they do about you. So we're going to find the right partner the next time. No more assholes. No more assholes. Like assholes is when you're like, oh, I'm not getting what I need. He's not committing, um, right? Or he's, or he's texting other girls, right? No more. No more. No more of those guys. Uh, once you find that generous long-term thinker, you are going to get after the first kiss. This is the book that helps you settle into this relationship and really start building it on a super strong level. Are these books for men or women? So um, most of these books, like the relationship books, are woman to woman because I'm teaching my ladies how to have great relationships like I have. I do have some books that are gender neutral, Dating 101, Custom Made, Say Yes to Goodness. That is for me to whoever is reading it. I also have a dating book for men. It's called The Perfect Play. The link to that is in the link tree in my bio. It's the first link in the link tree. It just came out, you guys. So uh, ladies, grab this one for your male friends who are single. Men, if you're single, grab this book. You are going to enjoy it. Um, so you got your great relationship. You've settled in. Um, now what you need to do is make sure you know how to resolve conflict. So Fix That Shit is a book that is going to teach you how to have a zero fight relationship. So no matter how long you've been together for, if you are with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you want to reduce conflict in your relationship, Fix That Shit is a book that's going to help you do that. You can get this one in audiobook. It is available only through the link tree in my bio. You won't find it on Audible. Uh, Custom Made teaches you how to discover what your purpose and passion is so that um, so that you don't make your partner your purpose, but you make your purpose your purpose. So yes, The Perfect Play is out. I thought I had to wait a little longer. No, The Perfect Play is out, my love. So if you're waiting for that book, go hit the link to my bio, hit that first button, go get it off Amazon. Uh, so Custom Made is going to teach you two things. What is your purpose? What is your passion? Also, how do I monetize it? I want you to start getting paid doing what you love. This is, this is where life gets absolutely magical, you guys. Uh, Dating 101, this is the book that I wrote to get into high schools in the sex ed program. Um, this is understanding the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. This is a free ebook. If you hit that free book button in the link tree in my bio. Say Yes to Goodness. This is the book about life, you guys. This is such a heartfelt, soulful book. This looks at 10 areas of your life that are affecting your happiness and how to navigate them so that you have a better perspective and you understand how to do different behaviors in each of these areas so that you become happier in general. So all these other books help you to become happier in your relationship. This one helps you become happy in your life.
I don't appreciate the assumption that all men are straight. Noted. Sorry, my love. I, I do speak in that language, though, because um, like, like the number one rule of writing is write what you know. And so, you know, where like where I communicate this from is from this experience. So uh, I don't mean to assume all men are straight. I certainly know not all men are straight. But it is the language that I use because it is from my experience. Happily married, but you're knowledgeable and I like knowledge. I love knowledge. Knowledge is power. It is so powerful. Okay, my loves, I'm going to go. Um, one last chance before I go to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. So hit my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop up and the pop up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Um, also take a moment to go hit up my Instagram page. You're going to find that in my bio. You're going to see that little Instagram icon. So hit that up and go check out my Instagram page and follow me so that you can take part in my coaching giveaway. Every month I give away a free one hour session. Uh, you can find links to my podcast and YouTube channel in the link tree in my bio. There's tons of free stuff in there too. There's a free book. There's a free long distance guide. It, if you hit the meditation resource button, you're also going to get a free uh, download, a free manual for meditation. Um, that link really helps you get started on meditation. There's tracks, there's instructions. Uh, what else are you going to find on there? You can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. But if you do want an audiobook, I narrate it. It is Fix That Shit. You will find that in the link tree in my bio. If you want a coaching session, hit that coaching button. Make sure you follow the three steps to book yourself in for a session. Otherwise, it doesn't count. I love you. I will see you soon because I never stay away from long because you know how I am. I love you too much. Have a good night. Yes, we're wrapping up. I'm sorry, my love. I'm so sorry. Have a good night, my loves. I will see you soon because I don't stay away for long and I got so much new clothes to show you. Mwah. Good night, my lovelies.